heard it's great. No, for real. Mel Gibson told me, so you gotta go. <laughs> I never, I've never met Mel Gibson. So, huh? Yeah, hey, no, Mel Gibson is an incredible filmmaker, and he's the only guy that beat the American media machine. It's a very difficult fight. I've tried it, and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they whoop, they'll whoop you good. <laughs> you can't even bug the system just a little bit. Look at Britney. Britney Spears just wanted to have a couple babies. <laughs> Look what they did to that girl. Fucking awful, man. She had to shave her head, just take the heat off her pussy for a minute. <laughs> I mean, it was like all that shit happened to her. <laughs> Some people know how to beat it. The po politicians, they can beat that shit because they get caught. In... Remember Gavin Newsom, he's the mayor of San Fran, right? So he gets caught fucking his campaign manager's wife. They were like doing blow and all that shit. <laughs> it's pretty old. That's, I mean, I like Gavin Newsom, though. That's some, that was, that's it's fucked up. You know what I mean? It was just the campaign man, his whole job is to be like, this guy right here is a hell of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a pretty dirty dog, right? So, but he got away with it. He's still like Teflon politician. And you know what he did? Uh, check himself in the rehab. That's the move in America. I don't know what it's like in Britain, but in America, it's secret celebrity system. Rehab is base. <laughs> For regular people, that's like you got to go there and get better and shit. But in the media style, like you're up in San Francisco Mirror, Gavin Newsom, base nigga, I'm in rehab. <laughs> 60 days. I got 60 days. I don't want to hear it. And I didn't know about rehab. When the media got me, and they hit me with, with the crackhead rumor. That shit was fucked up. And I'm a skinny black dude. I can't defend myself. It's hard. You know, people just believe that shit. It's very hard to defend yourself from that movie. Who else got in trouble? They get everybody. Elliot Spitzer. I actually like Elliot Spitzer too. I got a lot to say about that. I'm not. I should just come on, man. Can't anybody? Am I the only one that can? Can you see the codes, Sharad? You see the codes. You see the codes, right? It's always about something. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you actually understand what I'm saying? It's not Elliot Spitzer, though. It's a, it's a dirty ass system. Right. <laughs> hmm? Everybody gets in trouble, but not for the same kind of reasons. It's. I uh, can't explain it. It's a very big idea, and I don't know how to distill it without sounding like a crazy conspiracy nut. But it's not a conspiracy, it's an actual fact. You ever read this? You ever read this thing about. Uh, uh, Lincoln and Kennedy. Yeah. Somewhere on the internet, you'll find it. It's a list of similarities between, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Abraham's Lincoln's secretary's last name was Kennedy. Right. Kennedy's <laughs> secretary's last name was Lincoln. I used to be an usher at Ford's Theater when Lincoln got shot when I was in high school. I had nothing to do with the murder. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> But I just pay attention to these types of things. You know what I mean? Like the way they be trying to roll Barack over like he's Martin Luther King. That's a complete media phenomenon. I didn't draw that line. Martin Luther King was not an elected official. He wasn't. He was a chosen official, but he was not an elected official. That's the difference. Someone sees a young preacher this charismatic, they say, you know what, this guy could actually lead our movement. And at first they asked him, he said, I don't want to do it. <laughs> They said, why don't you want to do it? Because I'm 22, bitch. I'm getting pussy. I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> but then eventually, he's going to understand, like, this movement is bigger than him. And, and yet, and yet, may not have been the same movement without just that one individual. Now, OK, here comes Barack. Barack runs. And uh, it was just that shit happens. You know what I mean? Can't explain it. Yes, I can. Barack runs, Barack runs against John McCain, right? Uh, Barack's campaign song with Stevie Wonder's sign seal delivered, I'm yours, right? Stevie Wonder sponsors a bill for the Martin Luther King holiday. John McCain is from the only state that refused the Martin Luther King holiday, the state of Arizona. 
Anyway, the point <laughs> is, it's the same shit with all these people. Elliot Spitzer. Elliot Spitzer goes, how could he, how could he go to a call girl after he was busting prostitution rings in New York? I'll tell you how. Because he was the fucking attorney general. If you're the attorney general and someone puts a docket on your desk, he can't be like, I can't bust these people. I buy pussy. He just has to go and prosecute the case. That's his job. He wins cases. Of course, he's going to have political aspirations because he was good at what he did. And then Nas, remember when Nas went crazy on the, on the radio and he said, Hot 97 is taking money to play up these records and da 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 da. And everyone was like, Nas is insane. And Elliot Spitz was like, I'm going to look into that. And Elliot Spitz went in there and he was like, Hey, these guys are taking payola. And they fucking ended the practice, the age old practice of payola in radio. <laughs> and then years later, he's going to get busted at the fucking Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C. Miami Pussy. Let me tell you something. I'm from D.C. Do you know Mayflower Hotel? That's where Marion Barry was smoking crack while he was fucking a girl that wasn't supposed to be about. The point is this. Getting caught with a call girl at the Mayfly Hotel is like getting caught with a cheeseburger at McDonald's. <laughs> Nigga, that, that is where you're supposed to do those kinds of things. And then the girl comes out with a MySpace page, and she's like, oh, the reason I was sucking out his dicks is because I was trying to work on my music career. I'm a musician. I said, a magician? She said musician, but I heard magician. Ladies and gentlemen, for my next trick, I'm going to suck a record contract out of an attorney general's dick. Ta-da, same label as Knox. And you know what's so crazy about that shit? Which brings me back to the whole thing I was saying in the first place, is that Elliot Spitzer was gonna get prosecuted under the Mann Act. And that says it all. You know the Mann Act? The Mann Act? The Mann Act. <laughs> Sherrod, you don't know the Mann Act? No. You better know. In your line of work, you need to know these things. The Mann Act is the law that says it's illegal to take, it's illegal to take a girl across state lines for purposes of debauchery. The Mann Act was written to get one man, and that man was Jack motherfucking Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion of the world. He used to beat the shit out of white men and leave the arena with white women in the 20s. It was amazing. He fucked the whole matrix up. When Jack Johnson won the world championship, he chased the white champion. Back then, white champions would be like, I don't fight black people. It's beneath me. <laughs> but really, they were scared to death. Jack Johnson was huge. And you've seen them old tapes in them boxes. Them motherfuckers had that style like this. <laughs> Jack Johnson moved like a modern person. You know, these motherfuckers, are, if I had a time machine, I could be the heavyweight champion in the world. <laughs> Is this motherfucker pointing his fist at himself? <laughs> I beat the shit out of these guys. It was amazing. I mean, if you watch some of these Jack Johnson, because back then, you know, they wanted the same fight regulations. He would whoop their ass for hours. This was before cable television and all that shit. The movie just bop, 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 boo, and it was, it was fucking amazing. And then he would leave the arena, and he would openly have sex with white women all the time. Now, you think he would get persecuted for that, but they never touched him. Because the heavyweight champion in the world is the most prestigious title in sports. Period. You know who suffered for that? The white women. One killed herself. No, one killed herself. I mean, they fucking ostracized these women like you wouldn't believe. Just cut them off from everything they knew and loved for fucking around with Jack Johnson. And then they couldn't stop Jack Johnson. The headline of the paper say, Jack Johnson is it. They chased this nigga around. They made the man act. He had to flee the country. He was living in exile. Couldn't fight anymore. When Muhammad Ali saw Jack Johnson's story on Broadway, he said, that is my story. If you change white women to Islam, he said, that is my story. Right? Jack Johnson just got pardoned in 2005. Do you know who sponsored that bill? John McCain. Clean it up from that Martin Luther King shit. I'm telling you, it's all fucking connected. 
It's a very <laughs> flimsy system of pseudo or false morality. Yeah. Is anybody in here gay? <laughs> Get her! No, scared. I'm, I'm totally joking. This is New York. You're, are you gay for real? Yeah. Okay, so you know that gay marriage is illegal, right? Why do you think that that's illegal? Do you even care about marriage? Yeah, I want to get married. Eventually. It's really to a girl or a guy? Yeah. Girl. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it's illegal? Because people are scared of change. You think so? Morality. Who said morality? You think so? I don't. Whose morality? Who said big business? She knows what's going on. Huh? Hmm? Yeah. And it's and it's all good and well. You see, here's the thing. No matter what your morality is, it's still a secular society. So even if gay marriage is against my own personal beliefs, I can't necessarily <coughs> believe a government that would say we don't want to do that for moral purposes. Not why you fucking bombing Iraq like that or sending motherfuckers to Afghanistan like that. I mean, this, you can't be hitting me with all this dubious ass morality. They say morality because that's what their constituents need to hear and because they think that's what their constituents want to hear. But honestly... Bill Clinton said 90% of the shit that people talk about has nothing to do with what the actual job of the president is about. <clears throat> you think the president be sitting around, what time is it, 10 o'clock? Oh, we got that gay meeting. Hey, guys, what are we going to do about that? I mean, I don't give a fuck about it. Who actually is going to give a fuck? <laughs> Big business. And I have a whole belief system about that. You just don't want to know. About. <laughs> I'll tell you part of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a tier. It's a tier. Listen, marriage laws are fucked up in America. I don't think that the government should have that much say in actually how people devise a marriage because a marriage, right, devoid of any kind of religious belief or emotion like love is a business contract, period and simple. And tons of people in Washington or legislative bodies, even guys like Elliot Spitzer that have wives or fuck prostitutes, live in loveless marriages. And they have these shits arranged because they're in such a high social stratosphere that they have to keep up a certain appearance. So why are they imprisoned by their own marriage? It's this form of economic slavery. And if you look at the way this shit happens, corporations were made legal in, in the United States by the 14th Amendment, right? Or the 15th Amendment, which freed the slaves. And then under those rights, people said, we want the same rights as those motherfuckers as collective individuals, right? And if a collective individual and two collective individuals want to do business with one another, one's masculine, one is feminine, so they define a marriage institution between man and woman. But what if corporations is gay? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what if Aunt Jemima doesn't want to be with Uncle Ben? What if Aunt Jemima wants to do business with Sarah Lee? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> what if Uncle Ben wants to do business with Mr. Clean? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> guys, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a little gay. I'm sorry, I thought that was funny. What if Aunt Jemima... I don't think that's what Mr. Clean was... Um, Uncle Ben, wanna do this? Maybe I should have picked different companies. I put myself in a bad position. I'm just joking around. You're like, we don't want to hear this shit. It's just a conspiracy theory. I believe in aliens too, bitch. How about that? They're coming! Damn aliens, they're here! All that shit. Fake. World Trade Center. Fake! You want to know who blew that shit up for real? I ain't going to say that. <laughs> well, you know, I, it's my own personal thing. I don't even want to say that shit. It's, yeah. 
You know who I think blew up the World Trade Center? Ashton Kutcher. America, he has been pumped. Why did he blow up the World Trade Center? I don't want to sound like a cynic. <laughs> Shit was crazy, huh? <laughs> I don't know the truth, but I know who does. Strippers. <laughs> they know everything. Does anyone have a cigarette? Sure. <laughs> Good on you, mate. <laughs> I wish I had it. Your accents are so nice. Huh? <laughs> and I do listen to BBC News. <laughs> we all listen to the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> you all listening to the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that's what you say all the time. GMT. Oh, every time to say what time it is, it goes GMT. What does that mean? Who, who's mountain? <laughs> Greenwich. Oh. It's the cent. Oh, okay. Mean time. Greenwich mean time. Is that where the phrase mean time comes from? Yeah, baby. Wow, you can tell that your country conquered a lot of shit, man. <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time. <laughs> I learn shit every day. It's Greenwich Mean Time. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, bro, you ever heard that before? Yeah, I've heard it. I've oh, you're from Ireland, though. <laughs> You, Greenwich, yeah. Mean Time? What's so mean about it? It's a timeline. It's a timeline. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you ever seen a guy's I, mind I, stretch? I've my bike for it. <laughs> like in the 24 hours, like zero, zero. Oh, I don't do that 24-hour clock shit. I hate that shit. It's 1,500 o'clock. 1,500? No, I don't like that shit. That's when it's good to have them strippers around. Strippers are like the Google of the streets. Never seen someone answer so many questions without a crystal ball. <laughs> mm, it's true, it's amazing. Skill sets. Girls be I'm an accountant, no, 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 I'm a dog trainer, every goddamn thing. It's amazing. Mm -mm. All right, it was something hilarious though. All this shit is depressing. Ash and Kutcher didn't blow up those buildings, by the way. I don't want you to I'm not going to put that on him. Huh? American people. American person is one of the most lied to people in the world. That's our whole game with America. Because freedom is not a privilege, my friend. It is a fucking burden. Because a free person has to make choices all the time. And you can't make a good choice unless you have the information. And in America, it's not like China. You know in China when they had an earthquake, you know what the headline was in the newspaper? What earthquake? They don't tell those people shit. <laughs> in America, they'll tell you every goddamn thing. And then they don't prioritize the information. You gotta figure all that shit out for yourself. That's right. 
The war will be breaking out and you'll be like, did Michael Jackson fuck them kids? <laughs> <laughs> that gets shuffled funny. Because we live in the age of spin. You got to be so smart to live nowadays in the age of spin. You watch the news, that's not an absolute truth. That is a version of the truth. People tune into the version of the truth that makes them feel more comfortable. Sometimes I watch CNN, I be feeling bad, and I turn to Fox. Like, phew, we're winning again. <laughs> you got to just switch frequencies. That shit is not the truth. All the time. They'll tell you the truth, but that shit, man. That's why I like Anderson Cooper, because he can tell when he doesn't believe the story he's reading. It's just like... <laughs> Just work here, Dave. <laughs> I don't know. There's something to it. It's, it's, it's not that. You know what it is about the age of spent? Because they play so much words, I don't even know what the fuck anybody's talking about anymore. How can you actually know? How can you make a decision? It's like, you know what I mean? The way that we, like, okay, Planned Parenthood, right? Planned Parenthood is actually for abortions. It's for people who didn't plan shit out. So you don't know if you're pro-choice or you're anti-consequences. The whole shit is... If you think about them shits long enough, you'll go fucking crazy. And that's when you gotta find a stripper and be like, bitch, explain this to me. Because you know the dark side. Semantics. Man. I know. I know. All right, I should get out of here. I'm freaking myself out. <laughs> and I'm hungry. And I just got here. And then I was like, <laughs> I got in the car and said, take me to the comedy club. And that's how I got here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Like, what happened with you guys? You guys just decide, like, how do you decide to come here? Like, you two guys right here. I mean, literally, I look at you guys, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what your story is, but I know you, like, okay, how old are you guys? 19. You're 19, of course. They're too young to drink, but they just the right age to have a great ass time. I have been 19. <laughs> I can't even fucking explain what that was like. <laughs> it's great. I mean, I'm surprised. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I remember what it was like for me. I don't know what, you, huh? How can I explain with 19? Well, I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> how can you have a good time? Oh, that's right. You are Australian. <laughs> you can have a good time without drinking, can't you? You have a great time without drinking. I do it all the time. I was in Saudi Arabia. I didn't drink a drop the whole time I was there. I had a blast. Dave, what did you do for fun in Saudi Arabia? What the hell? I drove an Escalade with 16 cent gas. That shit was fucking <laughs> great. Drove that motherfucker in the circles. <laughs> what oil problem? You gotta see it to believe it in Saudi. That motherfucker. There is no gas station. He just <laughs> rolled out. Down the road. That shit was great. <laughs> I went to Dubai. You ever been in this place, Dubai? How is it? How is it? Well, have you ever seen the movie Blade Runner? <laughs> it's like that, but sunny, <laughs> with no robots or problems. <laughs> oh, it was fucking great. <clears throat> and there's so many, they building shit like you wouldn't. I mean, that shit looked like Legoland. That shit is amazing. <laughs> I'm not an exaggerator. I seen a, a billboard. We driving down Sheikh Mohammed <coughs> Highway, whatever it is. They got a billboard inside the highway. It say, we will build your skyscraper. I said, who the fuck is that for? <laughs> like, who's gonna pull up like, oh, let me get this number. I've been looking for somebody <laughs> to build my skyscraper. Yes, could you erect the skyscraper for me? I saw your billboard. We're busy. 
I mean, I'm not exaggerating. When I was there, they had 212 skyscrapers in production. If you can imagine what that looks like. 212. You know those big construction cranes? Half of all those cranes that exist on Earth was in that city <laughs> building 212 skyscrapers. That would be like if somebody said, I'm going to build Manhattan in the next eight months. That's what's happening on planet Earth today. And another 45 minutes probably. <laughs> They're all taking a break. And by they all, I mean the Pakistanis and Bengalis. That's a spill. <laughs> Everything has a soft underbelly. <sighs> yes, where else have I been? You guys are British, so you've been everywhere. <laughs> I don't care how obscure a place is. I've never gone to a place and I've seen a British person. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I was in Asia. I went to the Philippines. Woo! Who said that? <laughs> oh, you're Filipino? Oh, what's the other half? <laughs> you're not going to believe this. No, my wife is Filipina. Yeah, and my kids are, you know, are Puerto Rican somehow. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but, uh, I guess when we get together, we make, uh, we make Latinos together. They've never even been to Puerto Rico. Uh, why did I bring them? Oh, I'll tell you why. Have you ever been to the Philippines before? Okay, I went there, and I like the Philippines. I was actually, you know, I, I did not enjoy the poverty. I shouldn't even bring this up. I'd say it if Sherrod was here. It's the kind of thing, it's like, you know, when you're a comedian and you see something horrible, you should just only tell other comedians about that. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone else is going to, you know, like, we had that worldview. I'll tell you, because you're a comedian, all right? It's not funny at all. I'll tell you, I, it wasn't funny when I saw it. I'll tell you when it was funny. Um, okay, so we're driving down the street in the Philippines. It was like urban area. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Asia. Traffic, not so good. As a matter of fact, it's horrendous traffic, small, you know, it's, it's somewhat chaotic. For me, for my American standards, excuse me, everybody. I'm, <laughs> Whatever. Okay, you've seen you've seen hood movies. You picture bad neighborhoods. You've heard all these things, but you, you got to see you know real poverty. Like when an American sees it, you can't help but be like, "Holy shit!" Okay, so so we made a couple turns trying to get out of traffic, and then we turned into like it was like the real world, real real poverty. What do I mean by real poverty? Well. There were tons of things that I saw in that instant. Like, we turned a corner, and all of a sudden, it was like, I've never seen any of this shit before in my life. One of the things was, because uh, it was an urban setting, you have to imagine, it's a city, but there was a guy, and he was... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't funny to me. This was not my initial reaction, and I, I need to tell you that. But you're a comedian, so please look at it with those glasses. This is like that Kramer moment I was so worried about. <laughs> okay, we turned a corner, and there was a guy, he's walking, and he have no clothes on, right? Now, that shit could happen in New York, but but he the way he was walking was like he didn't have no clothes anywhere. Like, it wasn't like he was walking to some clothes he had. He was just walking like I'm naked, B. So so like I know now it wasn't funny to me at all. My kids were in the back. They were like, oh shit. Like, you know, they're like five and eight. Oh! Like, all right, so now, their reaction to it made me want that just because they're kids. And I remember what it's like being a kid. And he was naked, man, in the city. And we, all right. So I explained to the kids, listen, guys, you know, this is what the world is like. There's people out here don't have da 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 You know, there's grandmothers from there. She's explained to them, mom, we all explained to them. The kids like, oh, oh, snap, okay. So then we come back to America. It's like a, it's like eight days later, and we split up. Kids go back to Ohio. I said, I got to go to L.A. take care of some business. I went to Hollywood for a minute, and then my wife calls me up, and she says, and she's crying. I go, what's going on? She goes, she did it. I said, who did what? 
She's like, Manny Pacquiao, he won. And I said, oh, it's fucking great. You know, this happy, she said, finally, you know what I mean? Filipino people feel a lot of pride with Manny Pacquiao won, and it was kind of touching the way she felt. And then she said, he's going to give his money to the poor. And then I say to my wife, and this one is funny, I hope he gives, buys that guy some paints or something. And she felt like, but it was funny because it was, it was weeks later and it was an emotional moment and it was so emotional. I felt a little uncomfortable. So I just had to throw a little joke in there about the guy we saw with no pants. As a matter of fact, this show is dedicated to that guy. <laughs> the show is to the guy. Not just my set, I'm dedicating all you guys to the show. So. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. I, don't, I really didn't have anything to talk about. See that Barack was right. We can do this. <laughs> it's going to be great. America's going to be great again. You'll all see. Because yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't even, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Like, this is the first time I really voted. <laughs> And as I was an Ohio voter, so I said, this might be important. <laughs> and as soon as I walked into the polling place, you know what they said? Barack's got another one. And I said, <laughs> And I was, you know what I mean? Why are you going to assume that I'm going to vote for Barack just because I'm black? Because I'm also rich. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't want my tax to go up. <laughs> That's just my luck. As <laughs> soon as I get some money, that's when it's like, we get a black president, like, come on, Dave, let's be responsible. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Barack, all right. <laughs> now, I'm glad to do it. They just raised my taxes. This is going to health care. I'm glad to do it. <laughs> you know why? Because Americans should be allowed to be sick if they need to be. Yeah. I hope you have a good trip here. Do not get sick in this motherfucker or you are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even give a fuck about our own citizens. You think we're going to help you? <laughs> we have that Lords of London on you. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> we got to pay China back. And I've been to China. <laughs> and I saw the Great Wall of China. Have you seen it yet? Anybody here seen the Great Wall? Anyone? You've been to China? Are you Chinese? No. Oh, man, you must have been so jealous. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You guys got the demilitarized zone. That's great. I mean, the, what do you call it? What do you, what do you guys got in Korea? The DMZ, right? The something, something parallel. 45th parallel. It's a thin layer of America <laughs> protecting you. I'm just kidding. Did you like the Great Wall? I did. It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. You know why? Because it's the largest man made object on Earth. That's what they said. And she claimed the tour guide that it's the only man made object visible from space. I have yet to confirm that. I'm still getting my, <laughs> still getting my space money together. But it was amazing. Right? <laughs> I thought, I personally was amazed. Because I didn't know that the ancient Chinese people actually had, you know, Mexicans like that. Oh. I'm not saying Mexicans built that wall. I'm saying Chinese built that wall, keep Mexicans out of China. <laughs> That's a very advanced culture. America didn't think of that till five years ago. I was kidding. Well, am I, did I make that up? I'm sorry. I thought we were going to build something in Texas. Was that me? Yeah. Oh, no. That wasn't my idea, was it? 
All right, that was an easy joke, and it was wrong. <laughs> and, I'm, and, I, and you know what? Anyway. You know, if I, was, if I was the king of the world, though, honestly, I would give illegal immigrants just enough legal status so that they could at least get a driver's license and, you know what I mean, <laughs> call the police if something happened. You know what I mean? If you illegally, you can't even call the police. You know how much crazy shit look? I don't even want to talk. It's not. <laughs> I'll just. I'm going to finish up right now. This is it. This is all I'm going to say. All right, you seen the paper, right? I shouldn't even bring this up because it's not funny, but it's just an uh, illustration of where things are headed. And, <coughs> you know, there's a high incidence of violence in America, right? And violent crimes and all these like extraordinary crimes you read about. And I personally believe that the reason these crimes happen. It's because our paper chase is so volatile that something about something about America is criminal to be poor. Like, you know, make you feel bad. It's so bad it's like you gotta do something still something very desperate about our paper chase. Just culturally. I'm not blaming the government, I'm not blaming, but it's just evolved into that. Now, uh so I read I read them sometimes that these horrific crimes will happen in a, in Houston, Texas, there was a, a serial rapist. Which rape, by the way, is never funny, ever. And the only reason I bring this particular rapist up is because all his victims were men. I'm not joking. Seven men, so you can't YouTube this, this is really. Seven men in the Houston area came forward and reported this guy, which means he must have raped thousands. <laughs> because that is a very difficult phone call for a man to make. I'm just saying. It's not the same like when you get raped, ladies. There's no hotline or support group for that. When a man gets raped in our culture, you just gotta get up, walk that shit off, like, oh. <laughs> got raped. <laughs> Got a man up about it. Got be talking about it. These guys don't really care about each other in America. I, I can't explain it, but I don't know what a British dude would do. You might, but in America, you know what I mean? In Houston, Texas, I don't know. You haven't been to Houston yet. That's not the shit. That's not. Like, if, if dudes go out, like, okay, these two dudes might be best friends, right? <laughs> They're gonna get out, they're gonna say, hey, let's split a cab home, right? They're gonna get, and his buddy gonna be like, he's gonna get out the cab, and, and before he even get all the way out the cab, the cab might pull off. His buddy's not gonna be like, where you from? <laughs> they don't play that shit in Houston. Houston do be like, hey, man, could y'all uh, just wait for a minute till I get in the house? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll flick the porch lights on and off, let you know. <laughs> You pull off, they'll be furious. Hey, y'all could have just waited for a minute before I got in the house last night. Man, we was tired, all right? Shit, we had to drop everybody off. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? I got raped last night, baby. What? <laughs> this is American culture. So I can culturally profile these people. The victims. Culturally, I could make an educated guess that the victims of these attacks were white. And not for any other reason except that black people have such a bad relationship with police in America. I don't think they would have called the police. I think only a white person would feel comfortable enough to make that phone call the way the climate is in America. Socially. You know what I'm saying? It's just black people don't call. Black people don't call police for anything. I live in a white neighborhood now. My white neighbors call the police for everything. It's amazing. <laughs> Hello, police. Yes. Um, my neighbor is playing their music very loud. And I need police intervention for this. I don't want to handle this myself. It's fucking amazing. I've heard black dudes getting shot like, oh, oh. Call Earl. Quick. <laughs> Time to bring a pistol. Some shit's going on. It's amazing. I 
I just can't see that someone coming to the clubhouse. Oh, oh, Earl, what's wrong with you? Oh, I got raped, man. <laughs> raped? Yeah, they raped me. Uh, uh, let me use the cell phone, man. I called the police so I could fill out a report. Call the police? <laughs> Fuck that shit. Nobody raped somebody in our crew. We're gonna handle that shit ourselves. <laughs> what do you mean we're gonna handle it ourselves? What you trying to do? I tell you what we're gonna do. We can go to their neighborhood and fuck somebody in their crew in the butt. They will club out and be like, yeah, fuck that. We're gonna get them motherfuckers. That's when I walk in. Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, Earl just got raped. Raped? Oh, they got me, Dave. Yeah, man. We can go in their neighborhood and fuck one of their crew in the butt. <laughs> That's when I had my boys in the hood moment. <laughs> I can't get in that car, though, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what? You just gonna let somebody fuck around here? And, and you ain't gonna do nothing? Hey, listen, man. All right. I got kids and I got family. I'm famous, all right? I got shit to lose. I can't just be raping people every time I want to settle my differences. <laughs> Why don't we just call the police or something? <laughs> Can't call the police, man. <laughs> Raped. All right, just hold on. Let's just think about this, okay? <laughs> Shit. All right, look, I got some money, all right? Why don't we just hire some, some gangsters? <laughs> Rape these guys for us. <laughs> <laughs> then it turns into the Godfather. Go to Little Italy, pay them gangsters off. And they be driving around the hood. <laughs> there he goes. Hey, you, come here. Let me talk to you for a second. And the guy be looking like, oh, maybe you want to buy some crack. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> and then they put him down. Pull his pants down. Put down their pants and right before they rape him. He says, Dave Chappelle says hello. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm at the opera. <laughs> and my cell phone vibrates. <laughs> Hello? It's done. <laughs> okay. I told him Dave Chappelle, you said my name? Not an appropriate joke, I know. <laughs> Male rape is on the line. It's, it's, it's not. It's not rape. It's not funny, but it, but but it's so bad that it's. You know what? It's the kind of joke that I would tell in a nightclub, but I would never tell this joke on television. Even though I might, maybe I will. <laughs> maybe I will. I have mixed feelings about it because it actually happened. You know what I mean? And I want them seven victims to be like watching and then be like. <laughs> and then after the, I do this show on the television and I might be doing a concert or something and I'll be walking in the backstage and I'll be like, hey, Dave. And the guy be like, Dave, Dave. And my hey, man be like, I'm the Houston Rapist. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> That's fucking awful, I know. I, I feel strange about that whole thing. The whole, la the whole show has been weird for me. But you know why I'm doing it? For sushi. Can I have some sushi money for this? I'm going to, tonight I'm going to have sushi dinner. No, I'm going to go get sushi for myself. Hopefully with some of their money. And do you know why? Because I live in a place in America called Ohio. <laughs> Ohio is a great place. It's the birthplace of aviation. So they say. Uh, the Wright brothers built their little plane there. Uh, our license plate says uh, it's the heart of the all, and our state motto is, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> However, I'll tell you what's not possible in Ohio is getting a good sushi dinner because it's too fucking far from the water, and that fish be tasting funny as shit. 
So every time I come to New York, I try to get myself a decent sushi dinner. And I take a picture of it on my iPhone, and I send it to my wife with a little caption that says, in your motherfucking face, baby. And then she texts me back, L-O-L, fuck you. You know, we have a funny relationship. We really do. We have a good relationship. As a matter of fact, it's amazing that she's not with me. Because I depend on my wife so much. <coughs> my kids think I am their brother. <laughs> it's fucking awful. I mean, hey, y'all, let's watch some TV. Mom says we can. Oh, come on. That's crazy. It is crazy. I got man. I don't, don't get me started talking about the kids. You know, one time with my wife, when we when we argue, everybody argues. But sometimes, like I'll vent on stage. It's not. It's not cool. It's kind of unfair, but it makes me feel good. And, <laughs> and 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 one time I was doing that shit right, and I guess one of her girlfriends was in the audience, and text message her, and then she come to the show <laughs> with the kids. <laughs> But I didn't know. It was an early show. So, but then I seen her, and then I seen the kids, and then, you know, I, I had this ego thing. So now I feel like, well, I'm not back now because the kids are here. They're going to have to learn somehow. Oh because now I just don't want, you know what I mean? Switch my shit up. It was crazy. It was, a, it was the wrong decision. <laughs> then after the show, we in the green room arguing, and, she's, and I say, man, I'm talking all that shit. Damn, I don't want to talk about that shit. Fuck it! I'll go up like this, and my car don't start. <laughs> so now she gotta get me a ride home. <laughs> I get in the car and try to play like I'm asleep. <laughs> but really, I was awake. I just didn't want to talk about the show. And you know who else was awake? My son, my oldest son, in the back. And I hear him say, this, Mom, what is pussy? <laughs> I don't know, I, was fu I, I felt awful. And then I had to hear my poor wife explain <laughs> to her seven-year-old son, it was terrible. <laughs> she was like, uh, well, <laughs> whoo. I can feel her looking at me with hatred, but I'm, I was still faking like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, son, pussy is what keeps this family together. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many jokes about them kids. I'm not ready for that, though. I'm ready for that sushi dinner. Spicy tuna, I can taste it. Salmon with the crispy shit on it. I don't know what that shit is. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> You're probably right. Tempura flakes. Are you a chef or something? You just can tell. Yeah, sushi's good shit. It is really good shit. You know, like going to a restaurant, you take your shoes off. And they'll be like, sir, put your shoes back on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. I just get into the whole thing like I pretend like I'm a... <laughs> I'm sorry, little fellas, because I know you're 19. You got a lot of adventures to get into. That city is colony. And you're probably too young to remember, but there was a song just about what you guys are going through tonight. And it came out in the 80s, and it goes like this. You belong to the city. <laughs> you belong to the night. <laughs> Living in a river of darkness beneath some neon lights. And then there's a the saxophone part. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's old school. You don't know about music like that. You're 19, man. It's amazing. You don't understand. You grew up with the internet. I'm just figuring this shit out. You got satellite television. You got a phone in your motherfucking pocket. I used to have a cell phone this big. If I talk for more than 25 minutes, the back of it get hot. <laughs> 
he got these iPhones. I'm still impressed by that. Have you seen it? This shit is amazing. I could pull my iPhone out in front of Batman. He'll be like, what the fuck is this? Oh, you haven't seen this yet, Batman? I could go five years back in time with my iPhone. And when I get back in time, it'd be like, uh, what was it five years ago? 2003. Okay, I go back. I go back. I go back. I mean, 2004. All right. I go back in time, right? I somehow... I get access to a time machine. Now I go back in time. It's 2004, and I go to somebody and go, hey, I want to get something to eat. Where's a good sushi place? I don't really know my way around. I'm from the future. People are like, you are not from the future. I am too. Where are you from? And I pull my iPhone out and say, I'm from 25 years in the future. They believe. But really, I'd be like, I tricked you, motherfucker. I'm only from five years in the future. <laughs> Shit is right around the corner, motherfucker. It's about to happen. I tricked you. I'm only from, I'm only from five years in the future. The rape stuff was funnier, Dave. Well, I'm sorry, man. I thought that was just me. Okay. You guys don't know what I'm going through. I might melt down like Lenny Bruce on this motherfucker. You don't know what I might do. <laughs> You ever see them old Lenny Bruce tapes? Like, at first he's all funny, and then once they start, when he's talking all that trouble, he's. Oh, it's, shh, shh. I should melt down on the show. How about Joaquin Phoenix? What do y'all think about that? That was bad. All right, I watched it, and I, I, I watched that whole interview. And I said to myself, Joaquin Phoenix is a fucking genius. <laughs> that was like the greatest press appearance I've ever seen in my life. On Spider-Man? Spider-Man? Yeah, that shit was. <laughs> yeah, you saw it? Yeah. What'd you think? Was Why? He was so what? He was not, no, he wasn't stoned with it. Oh, <laughs> listen, I've been high. <laughs> he was in complete control of that situation. You understand, this is how brilliant it is. Basically, what he's doing is resisting every protocol of what it's like to be on a late night talk show. He didn't do any of the banter. He didn't do any of that, hey, good to be here, Dave. I got a new movie coming out. He didn't do any of that shit. But he's a completely different kind of celebrity than I am by design of what he does. He's a fine actor. So you don't know what he's like. Only time you see Joaquin Phoenix, he's in a movie pretending to be somebody completely different. And he's very good at it, so you can't tell what he's actually like. So this is the first time he ever stepped out in front of his work and he was like, made a point not to be charming at all. How have you been? Good. <laughs> what are you working on? <coughs> music. What kind of music? Hip-hop. <laughs> and then everybody laughed and he goes, is that funny? <laughs> I said, this guy's a fucking genius. <laughs> 10 minutes on Letterman, he was on every publication the next day. He was in USA Today. Look how crazy it is. Everyone was talking about, he's a fucking nut. He must have been high or something. Joaquin was probably reading that shit like. <laughs> I said, this guy is fucking brilliant. And you know who the guest on after him was? Exactly. <laughs> who gives a fuck what happened after that? Joaquin won, check and mate. I said, that's the Mel Gibson playbook right there. <laughs> Mel Gibson beat the game. Easily. And a move so weird and abstract, I'm surprised no one's done it sooner. This motherfucker made an action movie about Jesus. <laughs> check and mate. There's no answer to that. This guy took 20 million of his own dollars. We made an action movie about Jesus. <laughs> and the movie grossed over a billion dollars. He, he made $800 million off a $20 million investment. All in, he probably made close to a billion dollars off a $20 million investment. 
Do you understand what that will do to your life? Do you understand how much money a billion personal dollars is? It can't. It's enough money to get pulled over by the police in LA County and jump out of the car like fucking Jews. What's popping? Is everything all right? <laughs> police are like, you can't say that about the Jews. I can't. Base nigga, I'm in rehab. Game <laughs> over. That had never happened before. And then followed that shit up with Apocalypto, which was fucking. That movie's great. Have you seen it? That shit is like Mexican Braveheart. That is the best shit I've ever seen in my life. I was talking like that for a week. Daga, 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 cha. E daga, cha. You wanna know why? Because he made a movie, a major studio movie. He didn't use one Hollywood actor in the entire movie. That's not cheap. That's amazing. He got. He got indigenous people from the Yucatan to be in Hollywood. It's amazing. Can you imagine that shit? Just going to the Yucatan, let alone going there to cast some movies, walking up to somebody in a thong. I got taga, 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 I got taga. Have you ever considered acting? Taga, 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 my name is Mel Gibson, and Pat! Passion of the Christ! I've seen that! Ah! <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if I had a sketch comedy show... <laughs> let me tell you right now. If I had a sketch comedy show, I guarantee you, I fucking guarantee you, I would do the funniest apocalypto sketch that you, you couldn't even fucking imagine what I was doing. I got an angle on that shit. No, seriously. I got an angle on that shit that's so good. I'm like, nobody do that shit. Saturday Night Live, nobody would think of the shit that I would do. And it's so simple. It's right in the face. <laughs> if I had a sketch comedy show... <laughs> you know some funny shit me and my wife was talking about this makes me laugh you know that Beyonce song she goes <laughs> if I was <laughs> so if I was a boy you wouldn't understand <laughs> now listen to what, listen to what she say my wife say you would never hear a man sing a song if I was <laughs> She said some worse shit than that, but I won't tell you what she said, but that shit was really funny. If I was we used to let should be should be yeah, this, 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 this. You know, I do, how long have I been on stage? Like 25 minutes, 30 minutes? <laughs> Seriously, how long do you think I've been up? Hour 20. Five minutes. All right, one time I did a show, right? It's not too long ago, and uh, I lost track of the time. <laughs> I did seven and a half hours, right? I walked, I walked out of the comedy club, and Starbucks was open, the sun was up, everything. <laughs> I'm not going to do that tonight. And the only reason I'm not going to do that is because I haven't eaten my dinner. <laughs> my sushi dinner. I know you're from England because I already heard about you. <laughs> no, her right there. She's from England. I know her. Yeah. That black lady right there. I met her. Go <laughs> what is this, the embassy party? <laughs> the fuck is going on? How do they all know each other? I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, boy, you guys did conquer a lot of countries. <laughs> hmm? You know, I, I know, I know. 
Well, no, no, good on you, mate. I'm not hating. I'm a, I don't, you know, black American dude. This is a whole, you know, my worldview. You'll never understand. At least that's what I'll tell you when it's convenient. You know what I mean. Who are you from, man? What's your nationality? Habla habla español. Sí. Un poquito, sí. No, that's right. I be no, I be speaking some shit. I speak a little Spanish. Ah, I also know a little sign language. I sign slow as shit. Why do I know sign language? I like their pussy. Woo, that's good. Now, I used to live near a guy you did. It's the largest deaf university. And the girls was gorgeous. And I used to go, hey, what's going on with you? And they'd be like, oh, shit. And I, I literally studied that shit. <laughs> it didn't help. <laughs> so I was in Venezuela. I was in Caracas. Speaking the sign language. This is not even really a joke. It's just... Oh, Thought association thing. So I'm in Caracas and I'm watching TV and they have the bubble with the person speaking sign language. And I guess Spanish sign language is different than American sign language. Uh, it, all I can tell you is it's very sexually charged. <laughs> I was like, if she do like this one more time, I will lose my motherfucking mind. Barack doesn't need this right now. Can I have one more cigarette and then I leave, I promise. Hmm? <laughs> what time is it, Greenwich Mean Time? Oh. I like the way you guys talk. You're like, quarter past five. <laughs> You guys don't, it's not, it's this, it doesn't mean anything to you, but this shit sounds very different to us. Do you guys have sushi in there? No, just kidding, I know you do. I've had sushi in London at Nobu's. Over at Hyde Park. That's right. I have a plan to save the world. But I'm not going to talk about it. Some strippers help me put it together. Where y'all going? What train are you catching? Oh, you do have to catch a train. No, don't be upset. No, you ain't no disrespect. And hey, listen, if I wasn't me, I'd walk out on me. Because <laughs> I already know what I'm going to say anyway. Don't clap me off. That should have made me stay just to be spiteful. <laughs> and I got comfortable shoes on. Shit. I'm going to hold that cigarette, and then I, maybe I'll leave. Oh, I have to I have to leave. So, she, hey, she's my half-sister-in-law. <laughs> nice. Uh, Anyone else from another country? Cigarette. Who? Who are you, oh, you're from Australia. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> Belgium. I don't know anything about Belgium. <laughs> No, I know, you know, like I know the waffles and food products. I'm just talking about them. I don't know about your history. You guys are mysterious. Not that you're mysterious, but you're not troublemakers. You like that quiet country. There's, there's no Belgium stereotypes I can capitalize on. You know how the Belgium do. <laughs> oh, shit, they do be doing that. No good Belgium jokes. He is safe. <laughs> he leave the web with me. Diplomatic community. <laughs> uh, I had thought of this. Nah, I'm not gonna. That's corny. Let me get out of here. You know, sometimes I'll stay on stage and I'll just be thinking of so many funny jokes, but tonight, 
I can't think of nothing but that sushi dinner. <laughs> I'm not even lying. And I know where I'm going to eat it at, too. I might go to three different sushi restaurants <laughs> at this hour of the night. What time is it? Uh, 12.5. You're probably wondering why I couldn't tell that from my watch. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> but it still looks nice. <laughs> it's on GMT. Why well, yeah, I, well, I gotta like chicken? <laughs> I know, I know. I do like it. It's not my favorite, though. I like the mochado and the ponce. I know all about that culture, okay? You can't fool me. <laughs> I've been to the barbecues. I have all their food, and then we go downstairs. We want that karaoke machine. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then we go upstairs, pack up boxes, and send them to Manila. <laughs> Pants for everybody. <laughs> I really should do something about that. That shit was not cool. That guy was butt naked. <laughs> You're going to make it. You too. There's a couple. <laughs> You're going to make it. No, I believe in you. You know why? Because I talk like a cynic, but I feel like a romantic. I believe in love. Seriously. No, seriously. It can happen. Do you know I've never cheated on my wife? That's right. I mean, I'm not saying that for applause. I mean, but I really should get applause. I mean, you know, I've been going, I've been to All Star Weekend in Las Vegas and then she don't want. You know how fucking hard it is for a famous person to not fuck somebody at All Star Weekend in Vegas? I mean, listen, I'm not bragging, I'm just saying. You are regular people. You have to go out and you have got to look for trouble, okay? I just gotta go out and shit just starts happening. I've been minding my business, walking through the casino, trying to get in my room. The guy's, hey, you're Dave Chappelle, aren't you? Hey, how's it going, buddy? Hey, we got 12 naked bitches in the hot air balloon. You want to come in? Four o'clock in the morning. I've never been on a balloon ride at night before. I have to say no to these things all the time. And, young man, I have what's called an uh, old-fashioned courtship. Do you know what that is? It means there's no sex involved. Long phone conversations all night, hand holding, shit like this. What? Yes, I did that. <laughs> you know why? You know why, man? Because at first you'd be like, ah, you'd be sexually frustrated. <laughs> then after a while, you wait long enough and you realize you actually can see the person you're dating and you actually find out, like, oh shit, I actually like this person. Then you realize you got something special and it's worth the wait. You know what I mean? Oh. I was fucking other women to hold me over. Don't be naive. <laughs> but I'm saying. <laughs> Now, you know what I don't do? It. You know what? I've been cheating on before. We're all human beings, right? This happens to the best of us. I personally didn't like it. Uh, it happens, you know, you're a pretty girl. Have you ever been cheating on? You don't? No, okay. He's looking like. <laughs> I'm playing with you. You know, but you know how them Belgian be doing, man. That's good. I don't know what you're I, I don't know what you're doing. None of y'all have ever been cheating on. Any of y'all have never been? Never. Huh? Now that you know, oh, good on you. <laughs> I've been cheating on, and I caught the girl in the ass. What? That shit's dead. That's bad. You clap. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Look, the only thing for me, I mean, you can't even imagine how painful that was. For me personally, the only thing worse than seeing it with my own eyes, and this is just me, was fighting a naked man. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> was gross. <laughs> it's like he had three fists or something. Was you know, I'm boxing his upper body and then his, his dick caught my jeans. Just, just a little. 
That shit was really crazy. I mean, really crazy. Because I fought the guy for like two minutes. It was disgusting. He maintained an erection the entire time. I know. If you imagine how I felt. This is too much was happening. Not funny? That's not funny at all. I'm sorry, though, this was the context to say things like that. <laughs> Should I read some poetry? Don't tell Maya Angelou I'll be talking like this. <laughs> you know, I seen Maya Angelou, and I went to her house. Yeah. They didn't show this part on the television, right? You gonna take off? Don't tell Dr. Angelou about me. <laughs> Are you leaving for real? Do you want to hear the story? It's not all that, but it was. It is. It is because it's my angel. She you know what she do. See, the thing is, you have to. If you talk to her, right? I'm not gonna do an impression, but if you talk to her, she can quote literature like she's my angel. <laughs> I'm not even gonna tell you this story. It's not that. Well, she goes. There's a book by a man named Machiavelli called The Prince. She goes to a whole diatribe about Machiavelli, who he was, you know, historical context. And then I realize I'm talking to a woman who is America's poet laureate, uh, professor of literature, and, you know, Pulitzer Prize, whatever. She won it all. She says, she says, in this book, Machiavelli says to the prince, he must separate the people. And if the people cling to one another and refuse to part, then you must picture them as if they were in a pit. And eventually, they will push one of their own to the top to be their leader. And when they do, you must grab their hand and fling them to the mountaintop with the villa. And if they don't, no, she says, and if they refuse the villa, you must cut his motherfucking head off. She didn't say that. <laughs> she didn't say that. You must cut his head off. Do you know what that means? It means I should have taken that $50 million when I had the chance. <laughs> but you know I don't feel bad about losing that $50 million? Because what if I have $10 million in the bank? Okay, you know the difference between having $10 million and $50 million? Forty fucking million dollars, that's right. <laughs> but I can have $10 million in the bank. I can go to a restaurant and I can look across the room and I say, you see that guy over there? He has $500 million. We're eating the same thing. And we might even drive some of the same cars. And we might even fuck some of the same girls. Because I've never heard a girl say, I would fuck them, but he only has $10 million. <laughs> You'll never hear that shit. <laughs> it's all relative. And money is abstract idea anyway. I'm serious about that. It's out there. Digitally. <laughs> We're all digital strippers. <laughs> Working like hoes for digital paychecks. <laughs> Go to the bank and try to get all your money out. If you can, you probably don't have that much money. But <laughs> <laughs> if you can, then I hope that tax break works out for you. But uh, <laughs> 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 we have over $100,000. They're going to be like, we're going to, Mr. Chappelle, wait a minute. We're going to need to make some phone calls. Hold on, Mr. Chappelle. There's something wrong with our service. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know that you make a lot of money in the bank when they say hi to you as soon as you walk in. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> makes, the whole thing makes me nervous. All that money did not disappear, miss. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. <laughs> you know who I think has it? Strippers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she said, my mom must be rich. Ooh. <laughs> I can't believe that. A white woman from England just stoned me with the mama jump. 
<laughs> that is a first in a very long and boring career. Finally, something is, I've been waiting for you for so many years. I knew you would come one day. That was fucking great. <laughs> she just hit me with a mama joke. And it was all proper and British. Her form was nice. <laughs> I have no rebuttal for you. I do, but I'm like, no, we ain't know what I mean. That's like me going to Mike Tyson, like, hey, let's slap box. <laughs> Of course I have a rebuttal. And of course Mike Tyson could beat me in sandbox. <laughs> I hope to think that he wouldn't <laughs> demonstrate that. <laughs> what about the crowd Ah! <laughs> That's some Maximus shit right there. You heard it? What about for the crowd? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I heard that gladiator's music in my mind. Dun, 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 dun. Win the crowd, <laughs> and you will win your freedom. <laughs> gang, 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 gang. You know that's true, though. Really, if the crowd is with me, I can get away with a lot of shit. <laughs> that's why I miss my show. Cause I used to say the craziest shit on on television. I was thinking about that the other day. There was a scene in my show, and I, and I didn't appreciate this at the time. First of all, I like Rosie O'Donnell. Personally, I mean, I've met her and I know her. We look in the player haters ball sketch, we look at it in the photo flip and I say, she wears underwear with dick holes in it. And that's a silly joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember like, having a series of phone calls where we argue about whether or not I could say dick hole in that. <laughs> and I remember uh, the lady from Sanders practice called me Dave. I was like, yeah, she's like, you got it. You got dick hole. I was like, great. <laughs> but you be so busy you don't appreciate how great of a moment in your life that is I said dick hole on television I was over 30 when I did it that's fucking hilarious Robert Kennedy was the attorney general of the United States he was 36 years old I was over 30 I said dick hole on television you think they could have got away with that shit no you're going to make it, kid. You too. <laughs> thirsty for her, you No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm thirsty for a sushi dinner with some soy sauce. <laughs> I'm not that kind of dude. I don't like looking at other dudes' girlfriends. That should make me uncomfortable. You know what I mean? I mean, that's just me. I mean, I'll be looking at them, but not when they're together and shit, you know? <laughs> That's how I can tell I'm like a not a good looking celebrity. Because girls will come up to me like real hot girls will be like, oh, my boyfriend loves you. Like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> That's them drawing the line like, nah, this is not for me. I met this lady. She was fine as shit. You know what she told me? She says, my grandchild loves you. And I was like, holy shit, I'm talking to a gilf. <laughs> Actually, a grandmother, I was like, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> she was beautiful. That was amazing. I can't believe she had grandkids. We love you. No, it's all right. I mean, look, I don't, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, com I'm comfortable with myself. I know what I look like under these clothes. Not bad. <laughs> Naked, I look like... I look like a Kenyan runner. You ever seen them Kenyan runners were coming? <laughs> when, when they win the New York Marathon? <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm approximately like that. Naked. All right, everybody. I know I'm supposed to get out of here. Government's coughing in the back. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> Hey, you take care. I want you to have a great night. Do me a favor. Do not tell anybody you saw me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just working on my comeback. <laughs> 35 people at a time, baby. That's all I need. <laughs>
Sí, 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 sí. I don't need everybody. You're the little crowd that could. If I, I don't care about that. I don't want to be on TV right now. Not right now. But if I had a sketch, should I do that part a little bit? I had a good Barack sketch, too. <laughs> Although, you know what was funny? I'll tell you what. Are you going downtown? You got a car? Okay, I got one, too. Want to race? <laughs> this to 14th Street. We'll just race 14th Street. All right. I'm totally joking. <laughs> My car got a driver, but he seems like he's competent. <laughs> she got a Coca Cola in there? <laughs> oh. She said, <laughs> I like British people. She says he left it here ages ago. <laughs> I want to learn how to talk like you. Hey, she is back. What's happening? <laughs> hey, can I have a Coca-Cola? Hey, she is back too. <laughs> you know what he asked me about you? He asked me if I was thirsty for you. <laughs> We've all got a little Jack Johnson in us, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. I'm just kidding. You know that. Listen, listen. My mouth says racist things. My penis is humanitarian. <laughs> he wants to see everybody do well. Do you have uh, any Coca Cola? Oh, it is coming. That's just sushi. Downtown. <laughs> At a five star restaurant with a Japanese chef named Yoshi. Sushi? Hmm? Hey, it's a Japanese chef's a man. He's up. And you come in the restaurant, they go, I don't know what they say. You take it all, don't leave, man. Nah, man, I gotta just pee. That's all. <laughs> I've, been, I've been holding it a long time. No, you, be, you, know, you kept it real. You kept it real. We all go, hey, thanks, man. <laughs> Little practice. <laughs> The Korean lady was like, nice form. I was like, I was, I'm sorry. You know, I, know, I was kidding. You know, you know you want to come. Because I go to, you know, I go to the Korean sushi place in, uh, L in LA. It's a little different. It's good, though. It's still sushi. But this shit is thick. This shit be like wagon wheels. Them shit is delicious. It's like Thanksgiving for sushi. You guys don't know what the fuck. You know what it is? You guys are tired. And you guys have your own lives, but you know what? Hey, man. What y'all want me to do? Go home and just be by myself and not talk to anybody? I'm sleeping in a hotel, all right? Not cheating. And if I watch a porno movie, show up on my bill. And my wife knows it's porn because it don't have the title on it. Just says discreet movie. <laughs> David. <laughs> and after I eat my sushi, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to the gym. And you know what I'm gonna do after that? Get some rest. But first. No, I'm not gonna get more sushi. <laughs> But I traveled today, and I didn't get my dinner because my wife didn't cook. <laughs> and I'm a little old to be eating top ramen after 6 p.m. <laughs> getting a little old, getting a little tired of eggs for dinner. <laughs> Marriage does have its privileges. <laughs> I eat three meals a day now. <laughs> Are you really like one of those backpacking people? <laughs> have you have you gone all the way across America on this uh, walkabout? No. But you haven't gone across America. You ain't seen shit till you go across America. You know where you need to go? Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, what's that fucking town? El Paso, Texas. You ever been to El Paso, Texas? Oh man, you gotta check out this country. Is, gosh, 
All right. Hey, see you, man. Oh, okay. You been to South America? You go to the jungles and all that shit? All right, do this. Go to a state called Wyoming. In the top left corner, Yellowstone National Park. It's one of the most beautiful places in America. I'm serious. And there's no cell phone reception. And you know who I met there? Yeah. No, it matters. Uh, I'm trying to give you some more good travel tips. Oh! No, don't go there. <laughs> Your experiences traveling might be a lot different than what it's like for a person like me to travel. Because I travel in style, motherfucker. I, got it. I do it right. Fuck a backpack. I've done that before. Hey, you guys, take it easy. Oh, you're going to smoke. You know why I can smoke in here? Because I have an endorsement deal with Philip Morris. I don't drink alcohol. Change my ways. Hallelujah. story in the New York Times, though, uh, about, about how comedians were having a hard time coming up with Barack Obama. You got to be out of your motherfucking thing. <laughs> and not just because he's black. I mean, you know, but it's, 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 I, got, I got stuff. <laughs> I'm a joke. I'm a joke telling machine. I have no choice. Peanut and M&M's. The good stuff? Try them out. And as for you, get the fuck out of here. I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally joking. I just had to say something because I felt, I, I felt defenseless. You guys would have been doing this shit four years ago when I had that show. Look, like, I'm Rick James, bitch. Look at my titties. <laughs> So, fin <laughs> so finicky. I'm not, I don't want to grow up. Fuck it. I don't. I have to. I have no choice. But inside, you know how you feel all young and 19? That's how I be feeling. 19. 19. You don't even know about that shit. <laughs> There used to be a whole song about that. Remember that shit? 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. You know what it was about? Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> Saigon. <laughs> that was the average age of draftee, Vietnam War. 19. <laughs> 19. <laughs> Holy shit, the 80s were weird. <laughs> Remember Max Headroom? Yes. <laughs> and everyone's like, it's fucking amazing. Not really. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Kid, meet me up front. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking eighties. You remember that night rider? I'm, I'm on my way, Michael. It's a car with a British accent, but it was an American car. No thing was gonna approach. <laughs> when he was ready to go, he would just tell his car. <laughs> Kit's just getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> S 
It's a one hour television show like that. <laughs> Night Rider, that's right. One hour. You know, one time I went on a date with a girl who was a flight attendant and I couldn't tell how old she was. She was a flight attendant. Crazy things happened to their skin and she was black. So she could have been anywhere from like 20 to 60. <laughs> As I asked her, the course of the date, I said, uh, how old are you anyway? She says, David, you're never supposed to ask a woman her age. Like she got all, you know. So then I start talking about TV shows like I'm talking to you right now. And then I ask her, I trick her, I say, well, what shows did you used to watch when you were little? She's like, oh, I used to like to watch Gunsmoke and Bonanza. I said, Gunsmoke? <laughs> she was like, <laughs> She's like, well, she's like, when Gilligan's Island come on at nighttime. I was like, nighttime? <laughs> that shit came on after school. <laughs> yep. Hey, what's up? I didn't even recognize you. That hat on. Oh, you didn't do anything. Were you supposed to go on tonight? Uh, yeah. Oh, and I talked all the time up there. No, it is awkward. You know why? Because you need to pay your dues. I'm just kidding. I'm totally, I'm totally joking. I'm totally joking. Uh, the old comedian slave, you know what happened to me one time? I'll just tell you, it didn't happen to me, actually. No, actually, no, this didn't happen to me. Something like this happened to me. But I'll tell you the one that didn't happen to me because it was funny. It was a comic, it's a funny comic, but he's a new comic, and he was bombing on stage one night, which is already hilarious. You know how that is. Because as comedians, no matter how much we love each other, it's, it's people bombing. It's funny. Even now, it's not going well, the worse it goes. <laughs> For us, the funnier it is. So he was bombing, but he was having one of those bombs. Yeah, it seems someone bombs so bad they get thirsty. <laughs> he was bombing like that. And then was, <laughs> you had to be there to see it. There's an old comedian in the back, and he kept going, Pay your dues? <laughs> As he was having that throat dry bomb. He kept saying, pay your dues. <laughs> and I mean, it's like, I'm bombing now, but but this is not really, <laughs> this is not really bombing. Like, you think, oh, I saw Dave, he's not doing so well. But you've never actually seen, I mean, when somebody bombs, hey, hey, no, it's all right. It's all, I don't, you know what I mean? I'll come in peace. If you don't, you know. You know how it is with somebody bombs. Have you ever seen someone bomb so bad you should be like, I'll remember this for the rest of my life? <laughs> okay, so listen to this. I'm t and, I'm, and I'm saying names. Yes. All right, so I'm in L.A., right? Showcase for NBC. So you can imagine what that's like in L.A. It's a network showcase. It's bringing all the comedians come to audition for a major American television station. This particular night, instead of the steps that people normally walk on the stage, there was a ramp built. And they wheel onto the stage a gentleman to introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Carl Crazy Legs Fonseca. <laughs> and Carl Crazy Legs Fonseca comes on stage. They wheel him up there. And I'm not exaggerating. This gentleman is a real person. He's incredibly handicapped. <laughs> they said he had cerebral palsy, but I mean, it was amazing. He was very handy. Rocking back and forth, this, that. So I'm just telling you as an audience member, it made me feel a little uncomfortable at first. Then he starts doing his act. Gets his first laugh, it was a good laugh. Second laugh was an even better laugh. Like by two minutes into his act, it wasn't uncomfortable. Three minutes to his act, it was like he wasn't even handicapped anymore. I'm telling you, by seven minutes, it was beyond handicapped. It was like he was standing tall, and by eight minutes, he was fucking superhuman. Listen to me. I have never, I'm doing comedy over 20 years now, I've never seen somebody before then or since then do this good. It was fucking amazing. I mean, he was genuinely, sincerely funny. Crowd starts going nuts, and he finished his show. He said, thank you very much. Good night. And the place fucking erupts. I mean, I have never seen anything like this. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
He drops the mic. They wheel him off the stage. Audience is still standing up clapping. <sighs> it was fucking amazing. Now he's all the way to back. You know, the LA, LA Improv is. <sighs> he's in the back, still going crazy. It's like the end of Purple Rain when Prince walked through the motherfucking thing, <laughs> and everybody's all in the hallway. <laughs> I mean, it was frothing at the mouth. People were loving him. On all that hoopla, I hear the MC go, ladies and gentlemen, Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> Nick DePaulo. Yeah. <laughs> He's a funny dude. I call this a cosmic, cosmically funny. You know what cosmically funny something is? That's when something happens in the room, and it might not be funny to the people in the room, but the joke is actually told by the observer. Because then you say you saw it, and then it's funny. <laughs> this shit was cosmically funny. So Nick goes on. After call, Crazy Ace my second had what I still consider the best set I have ever seen in my life. Nick Powell went on. You can tell him I said this. He had the worst fucking show I have ever seen any comedian. I mean, this motherfucker died the most horriblest death ever. I mean, it was fucking amazing how bad he did. And it was the worst kind of bomb. Because it wasn't like a loud bomb. It was just like a... I could feel hate radiating on the audience. And you know why he bombed? Not because Carl was so good, but because Nick... Did all handicap jokes after him. It was fucking him. <laughs> right. It, he had to be a comedian to understand how. It was so fucking wrong that it might have been the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like while the whole crowd was like, we hate you, Nick. I was thinking, I can't wait to tell somebody about this. <laughs> I remind him about that almost every time I see him. You remember when Carl Crazy Lady Fonseca went up and he did all the handicap jokes? Why you do that, Nick? Why do you do that? Bad decisions. Honestly, though, if he did his best stuff, I don't think there's anything he could have done after that shit. You know who else, Mom? I met Dina John. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Ahmed Dina John, the uh, president of Iran, he came to New York and bombed. He had, first of all, he had the worst introduction in the history of public speaking. Coming to the stage, this next man, many would consider to be a, well, a complete lunatic. He <laughs> diligently pursues nuclear weapons. He denies the Holocaust. He thinks that homosexuality doesn't exist in Iran. Please give a big New York welcome <laughs> to Akamaka Jagaja or whatever his name is. <laughs> Shit was awful. <laughs> they should have already introduced him. <laughs> Audi for Club, like, yo, you seen this next nigga on the uh, History Channel? He's been on. <laughs> He's been on CNN. Fox News. <laughs> Give it up for Ahmed Dinajan, y'all. Show him some love. <laughs> Thank you, Artie. <laughs> this lady said, this is painful. <laughs> no, miss, this is fucking hilariously self-indulgent. <laughs> you know, in every comic's career, you hit a stride on the stage where everyone in the audience becomes an extension of your own imagination. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you do good or bad. Why? What did you want to talk about? What did you wish I'd talk about? Barack Obama. <laughs> hmm? Really? I think you're good. <laughs> At least I like your skirt. <laughs> I do. I do. You know why? Because there could be an asteroid speeding towards Earth right now. And do you think they would even tell your ass? No. <laughs> they would not tell you shit. Just in case it missed, they want you to work every day until the last day of the asteroid. Oh, it is coming. Sorry we didn't tell y'all, but we thought maybe it might. <laughs> <laughs> thought maybe it might miss we didn't want to slow the economy down because we got to pay China back. <laughs> Everybody's got to pay China back. And you know what it is about Korea, miss, that it gets me? My Japanese friends say you copy them, but I don't believe that. You know what? I'm just kidding. <laughs>
I'm just, just trying to start beef. <laughs> Isn't that a rivalry though? Japanese Korean, the Sony Samsung rivalry. <laughs> so, strip would know. That's, not... <laughs> That's why I'm gonna have a footnote. And my next time I do a show, this information was fact checked by a strip. <laughs> Knows who he's talking about. <laughs> strip was American. I don't know who strip. You know, I went to a strip club in England, in Soho. I don't go to strip clubs anymore. I think they froze, but at that time I did. And because I was, I was around 19. 19. This is a true story. It's not even. And you know what? In the age of Barack, this would be so out of context, but just picture this. So I go to a strip club and it's empty. This is your Soho neighborhood, right? Uh, I get in there, it's like me and another comedian and like two other kind of shady looking dudes. And the room is real small. We just kind of sitting in there and nothing's happening. Like nothing. And then I, I don't remember if it had a speaker system or a boom box. But like a girl rushes in. She's wearing like street clothes. She runs into another room and she comes back. <laughs> Comes back uh, in a not like a sexy stripper suit, but in like a a Jane Fonda workout leotard kind of thing. <laughs> Had like this one piece swimsuit stock. <laughs> this actually happened to me. So we're sitting in there with these two shady guys, and she she puts a mat down, like a yoga mat type thing. <laughs> It's actually heaven. And she looks at it and she says, I'm not going to take my clothes off. I'm just going to do some exercises. <laughs> and we were just sitting there like, huh? And then she started doing all this shit. Like, literally, like this. She's and going. This goes on probably for, I mean, literally, she's, ex she's exercising right in my face. <laughs> and this goes on for maybe what seemed like forever. It was probably about a good five minutes. You know I'm not good with time. <laughs> could have been five minutes, could have been an hour. I can't tell. Bottom line is she's exercising, and it's going on. And back in these days, I used to smoke a lot of reefer. And I could find reefer in any country. So I had weed in England. I smoked it. And I'm, I started to laugh. It's a very small room. <laughs> But I started laughing uncontrolled because I was like, this is fucking hilarious. And it's, it's just, you know what I mean? It wasn't sexy at all. It wasn't any fantasy in it. It just was like this weird, sad portrait of a woman exercising in front of me. It was fucking crazy. So, okay, I'm laughing. You had to, you, I don't know if this is even funny. It's just like, that my name side of the stuff. All right, she got serious. I start laughing. She gets mad, and she's and she she stands up. But you have to picture how bad this is. She's in the Jane Fonda. You know Jane Fonda. And then she's turning around and she's furious, and, but she still got that outfit on. And she's like, "Well, I'm not gonna dance for a nigga." Like <laughs> And it, it, it was so fucking weird. And then I started laughing harder. And then I say that there's a big bouncer guy in the corner. I go, hey, can we get another stripper? Mine is racist. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be that was very funny. And then they ended up kicking us out. Like we weren't going to leave anyway. But it was just something about... What time is it? What's almost one? Five, five minutes? <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave. I'm going to walk off stage. At... No, no, no. I'm going to leave because uh, cause the place is still open until two. <laughs> so I'm going to go there. But if... All right. You know why? Because in New York, you can do anything so late at night. And I'm... You know what I mean? Right now, I'd have been sleeping. I'm serious. I'd be probably sleep. All right. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Man, you guys dress good. Well, this stinks. <laughs> it does not stink. I'm actually having fun. And the more uncomfortable you feel, the stronger it makes me. I was like that you guys are 19 and you just like, I don't know. What are y'all gonna do after this? Head back to the hostel. The hostel? You live in a hostel? Oh, where are you from? Wow, that's a great city. And let me tell you something, your strippers would have never done that to me. That's what <laughs> Man, that was great. I mean, it is, yeah, that, you know, Montreal made my career. I'll tell you all about it. That Just for Lance Festival was fucking, fucking fantastic. <laughs> you staying in a hostel, too? Yeah. yeah. All of you? <laughs> I saw a porno movie like that once. <laughs> Where is it? How much does it cost? <laughs> you will, will you? Yeah. Look at you, pimping. Oh my goodness, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, are you? Don't worry about a thing, mate. I got a whole hostel full of pussy. I'm oh, scared, I didn't mean to say that. What do you, huh? Y'all need, to, y'all need to get your knapsacks and move hostels. <laughs> you might be in their own hostel. <laughs> wow. Man, that sounds great. What are the beds like? So hot. Bunk beds. Hot girls in bunk beds. You lucky though. And poor me, I gotta go over by myself. That nice ass four seasons. <laughs> well, I ain't I'm fucking around. I ain't saying it the four seasons. <laughs> you know where I'm staying. <laughs> but there will be some sushi in my name. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this. I can't believe that all you guys are staying at a hostel and this guy's. You, know, you can't see yourselves from my perspective. I'm looking at this long ass table, look like the last supper of pussy, and he's like the Jesus. <laughs> I'm totally joking. I know these jokes. These jokes stink. I know. <laughs> I should go. Oh, this is a class trip. What school? What's college? Oh, okay. We call that college here. <laughs> it's the same thing here, right? Isn't the college and the university is the same, right? No. What's the difference between college and university? Colleges don't get PhDs. Oh, these are the kind of nuances that only white people pay attention to. (laughs) I'm going to university, Cambridge. You? Oh, you guys go to Cambridge? Oh, I stole a bicycle there one time. (laughs) Rode that shit all around. I put it back, but I did. I did take that motherfucker for a few hours. Cause I was hanging out with some Belgians. <laughs> what do they call you guys? Belgians? Belgians. I call them Belgians. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know we Americans, we don't know about how you guys identify each other. I almost got in an argument with a guy in Amsterdam. It was, it was crazy. He, he's like, I don't know where he's from. He goes, how many languages do you speak? <laughs> I was like, excuse me? And then, you know, Amsterdam, so I was like, Amsterdam. He said, how many languages do you speak? I said, how many languages do you speak? (laughs) 
He's like, I speak five languages. <laughs> that shit was crazy. I was like, yo, I'm from America. <laughs> I can get on a plane and fly out for six hours from one end of my country to another and speak one language the entire time. Because that's how we roll. I said, and you speak English, so what is the fucking problem? Give me some more of that weed. Because you guys have got to speak at least five languages. So living over there, everybody speak. I'm glad you got that one money now. That's good. We live in Australia. English is not your language anymore. You know why? Because uh, black Americans got a hold of it. And tweaked it. We did, we tweaked that shit. I was watching the news today and they were talking about the bling at the Oscars. And I was like, really, the bling? <laughs> you made that silver? You made that up yourself, white folks? You did it yourself. Do it yourself. <laughs> this is like a bizarro world. Take it easy, fellas. This is like a whole new, the whole world inside out. It is all the imagery. Man. It's fucking crazy. I live in a bubble. That's what they do. They do that in England, too. Hmm? They put celebrities in the bubble. I seen Amy Winehouse in the British tabloid. And I was saying, well, you might want to rethink that rehab thing. <laughs> I've never looked at a celebrity and been like, I'm worried for you. But she actually, she literally, like, it would take a lot to worry me. I was like, you need help. Like I would, I would, she doesn't know me. She probably doesn't even know who I am, but I would stage an intervention. <laughs> you just read about it in the tabloids. Black man breaks in Amy Winehouse home. Smack on the face, says stop doing drugs and snuck out the window. <laughs> I wouldn't even take nothing. I'd just be like, stop doing, doing drugs, Amy. You just <laughs> No, I know, but this one's special. <laughs> I'm not, I got a carton. Hey, you want one? It's an American oh, cigarette. I, I like it. I like the way she said that. I'd love one, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the way she said, I'm half for the peanuts. The way y'all talk, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, here you go. Stop being a bitch. That's good. That's fair. That ain't a smash, but I do like this. Uh, yeah, help yourself, man. We're all in this together. I'm going to get you guys through the experience of spending this much time with me. <laughs> you going downtown? For real, for real? Yeah. You going to do a set? <laughs> I'm going to do that. I have other things, important things I should be doing, but... But you know that goes. Hmm. Sushi sounds better, right? And I need to eat whatever I do. Seriously, I got a tennis game tonight. Uh, I love it. It's good shit. Let me tell you something. They have that in Australia too. Yeah. You guys got everything we got now. Shit ain't no fun being from here. Every place is the same. But shit, no fun anymore. Kalgoorlie, Kalgoorlie! Kalgoorlie! What's so great about Kalgoorlie? They ain't that fucking sushi. What's so great about that? <laughs> he said there's no sushi in Kalgoorlie. That sounds awful. I'm the Kalgoorlie. We don't have sushi or pussy or anything like that. Push pigs, man. Push pigs. Ugh. <laughs> Australia is so crazy. You got them kangaroos and shit. Let me tell you something. That is probably the most horrifying animal I have ever seen in my fucking life. I saw it on television. I did not like the way that shit looked. She looked like a rat with a pouch with a smaller rat in its stomach. <laughs> you know what I look like this? 
And a baby be in that pile. I said, this shit is disgusting me. This is the fucking creepiest animal I have ever. Huh? I said, I wish they were crazy. Are they friendly? Nah. You can't just go. That's about Kyle every time. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Fucking disgusting. A kangaroo smashed your car. And I heard they box. They box. They jump. They jump. They big. Like this? No, seriously? Like, I heard they lean back on their tails. Yeah, they do. And they And then you're out of it. It's fucking crazy. Not me. You might be out of it. I'll fuck that kangaroo up. Can't be back. I'm going to smash your car. Not my spree wheels. What if you die? You can die that way. What's that, sir? Yeah. They can kill you. Yeah. With them strong ass feet. Yeah. Right through the beat screen. It's fucking crazy. Could you imagine dying like that? Could you imagine? If you're like, Dave, Dave, they come and think, it's Earl. What happened to Earl? He got raped again? No. A kangaroo kicked him in his stomach and he's dead. Kangaroo. It's a fucking creepy animal. And the way their hands be little like this. <laughs> shit is fucking disgusting. I can't even explain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it looked like a rat with another rat. With a, with a smaller rat in the pot. <laughs> fucking disgusting. You ever see, you ever catch a rat in, the, you know, in New York? And, you ever see them rats when they be eating? Isn't that shit gross? You ever seen them eating something that they don't want to run away from? They just look up like. <laughs> Ugh. It's fucking nasty. Where I live, I got like deers, raccoons. You know what's ugly is you seen the possum? They don't got those in England, do they? Shit's a fucking ugly. <laughs> They look like it, it look like a, a rat that just woke up. <laughs> oh god, his hair be all matted and look. <laughs> and they cause they can't see good, they're nocturnal. So I'll drive and my headlights will be on. I'll be this close to them, they'll be like <laughs> fucking nasty. <laughs> Ugh, they're gross. We got a lot of animals like that in America. You guys have got to see the real America. Don't just stay in a hostel in New York and see New York. This shit's just like London, but new. <laughs> Seriously, you know, London is like so old when you go there because, you know, it's, it's England's old country. You know, our shit still got, you know, our shit is new. But uh, if you go in the middle of America, you'll see some shit you've never imagined. <laughs> Fat people. <laughs> uh, the scenery, you gotta go for the scenery. They're skinny people. We gotta, you know what it is? Like, it'll look the same if you, if, okay, say you take like, where are we? We're in New York. Okay, take route, what is it, 80? Take 80, then you take 80 to 71, 71 to 70. Take Interstate 70, it's a straight shot. Everything looks the same from the time you get on 70. To you get to uh, Kansas. Once you get to Kansas, the whole country flattens out. Then after Kansas, the end of Kansas, you start seeing hills. Now you get into Colorado. This is when the shit starts to get real good. <laughs> no, seriously, because before that, you're going to be on 70. You're going to go to Indianapolis. You're going to go to St. Louis. And a lot of barren cornfields. When you get to Denver, then you start seeing mountains and shit like that. Right? And then you take 70, cut north, go up through Wyoming. Everything's empty. You can see nothing but mountains and gay cowboys. <laughs> and it's just a movie. You get to Yellowstone. When you go to Yellowstone, then you make a go to 80 something, get back on 80, 
you'll go through, uh, what's the name of that state? Idaho. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> get gas before you get there. <laughs> and do not stop till you get to Salt Lake City. Salt Lake's not bad. Stay in Salt Lake for one night. Salt Lake, you can make it all the way to Vegas. Once you get to Vegas, almost all the way across the country. You just got to spend the night in Vegas and do acid. And if you can get out of that, <laughs> you can get out of anything. <laughs> and then if you want, you can see L.A. But once you've seen Vegas on acid, what else do you need to <laughs> You can kind of you just fill the rest in. It's all downhill from there. Then you get to Route 1. You drive up Route 1 up the western coast of the United States, and I challenge you Brits to have anything in your country that looks half as good as the west coast of the United States. Ooh, yeah. You can't do it, and don't feel bad. America can't even do it. Only the west coast looks like the west coast. <laughs> it's true, right? Even the weather. That shit is great. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm just jealous because you guys are British don't be it I'm a nationalist I'm sorry you know a black man started the American Revolution or what you might call Civil War Christmas Addicts threw a snowball British soldiers and they shot him in Boston Black man's first experience with the disproportionate <laughs> response of <to> police. <laughs> Snowball. Actually, yeah. Any other questions? Because I really got to get this. Then I got about 25 minutes. <laughs> to get all the way downtown, and I got to order my sushi. Yeah. I think that's the least I can do. That's all. Oh, you want to go out tonight? What you trying to spend? You trying to spend hostile money? <laughs> it's New York. This is one of the most one of the most expensive cities in all of America. So I'm not sure where you should go, but I know who knows. Strippers. <laughs> go to strip club. Uh, yeah, this is better. <laughs> she gonna go with you? Huh? <laughs> oh no! Don't go to the strip club. <laughs> no, I don't go to the strip club, man. Come on, this titties everywhere. Go see something truly New York. Go to the twenty-four hour Apple Store. <laughs> that shit is great. <laughs> Any place with kangaroos and no strippers, I have no interest in. <laughs> Oh, that sounds much better. <laughs> Kyle Gunn, get me a t-shirt. I'm on my way. <laughs> Kyle Gunn. Oh, there you go. From Her Majesty with Love. It's James Bond movie. Thank you. No. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe you guys sat through this entire show. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make t-shirts for people who can survive my show. <laughs> and I'm, I'll make it so that it won't even be a show anymore. You know what it's going to be? It's going to be an endurance contest <laughs> between me and my audience. <laughs> but I can't do that at a concert. The concert, I have to have an act. Here, there's a little no consequence. People always ask me, you're a comedian. What happens if you tell your jokes and nobody laughs? Nothing happens. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. And that's the beauty of my job. It's really a no-risk uh, scenario. And I'm sorry I talked all your time up. But uh, I'm only coming around. I'm like, Haley's coming. I'm never here. And it's just your first two years of doing comedy. Three years from now, I'll be a has-been. It'll be a wide-open playing field. You'll be like, I remember him. They'll be like, who? I'm like, serious, that happens. I've done that to him. But you know what? Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, 
Krzysiowa. Do I know how to use chopstick? Shit. I'll be chopping it up with the chopsticks. Yeah, I'm good with these. I'm, I, I'm nice with it. But I still wanted to go because I wanted, I got a whole ritual. I need green tea. I'm just kidding. That was very nice. You know, she's from England too. Yeah. But we actually poached her. She's an American citizen now, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. She gave up health care and all those good things that you had. <laughs> Come live amongst us. How are you liking it? How are we treating it? We're different kinds of people as Americans, aren't we? Especially in New York, yeah. In New York, well, New, well in New York's a whole nother shit. Even if you watch the local news, which you might not have in the hostel. But uh, <laughs> they always say this thing, and the thing that gets on my fucking nerves, actually, because I don't live in New York anymore. But I was like, and now for a look at the world beyond New York. <laughs> so, great. Go fuck yourself. And now for a look at the world beyond New York. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that beyond New York, cigarettes are $6 cheaper. <laughs> Gas is affordable. You can buy a house for less than a million dollars outside of New York. You can't buy an apartment. You know the average price of an apartment is in Manhattan? $1.2 million. Maybe not a lot of pounds. That's a lot of dollars. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah. <laughs> New York is expensive. Is you know how much a pack of cigarettes costs in this yeah. motherfucker? Nine dollars for a pack of cigarettes? Shit. Yeah. And you know how much it costs to ride a subway? Well, if someone tell me, because I don't ride subway. <laughs> That's right. You've met your first black elitist. It's great. It's, no, it's great. You know why? You know why? Because all of them things with eight dollar cigarettes, that shit don't affect me. That affect poor people. I don't smoke anyway. I travel. I bring cigarettes from Venezuela. Nigga, you know how cheap them cigarettes are in Venezuela? <laughs> they hand roll them shits right running. Make me a pack of cigarettes and make it snappy. <laughs> Catching a flight to America. Sarah, I'm gonna have to charge you extra for speed. It's gonna be eleven cents. Ah! I bought a mansion in China. Do you know how cheap a mansion in China was? $472. It's made out of Legos. <laughs> oh, get it, because they make toys. They make poisonous toys, and poisonous milk. I live in a poisonous Lego house in China. <laughs> Legos. <laughs> Nothing? Okay. <laughs> that's fucking, that's good. I live in a house made of toys in the store. And bring your sexy ass up here. It's 21 years old. Everybody, we have a visitor to our great land, and she celebrated her birthday. I got a story for you, Anna. How old are you? 21. Well, you know what? This is somewhat of an event for me. Here, have some birthday sushi. That way, if they poison me, Anna will die. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Anna. None of us are going to die. And uh, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I was going to tell you? You do look nice tonight. What I was going to tell you is, I had my 20th birthday in your country. Well, Woo! kind of. I was in Edinburgh, but that counts. That's well, <laughs> Scotland. It's pretty close. It's not. Does it count? All right. I shouldn't have said that shit. I did. I had my 20th birthday in Scotland. It was, uh, it was great. It cold. It was cold, and it was August, which I thought was a little strange. 
It was at that comedy festival. You know what was so crazy? It was the Edinburgh Festival. And that guy, Emo Phillips, was there. You know how cold it is. And Emo Phillips said, This country is so much more advanced than America. It's already November. <laughs> that shit was, <laughs> that shit, that's like the only joke that I didn't tell that I remember from the whole family. It was very funny. <laughs> and then some girls from Spain made me a turkey. <laughs> I've had adventures, too. I've lived. I was around your age. And uh, then later on, I came to the house and it stunk like holy hell. And I thought that a mouse must have died. And then, then I realized that we left that stanky-ass turkey in the oven. And then it had just rotted. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And back then, I had a CD player, and I just brought Cypress Hill. It was the only CD I had with me. <laughs> So all the trip, I kept listening to that. I want to get high, so high. <laughs> I want to get high. <laughs> this is before ringtones, before you're used to hearing a song all the time. I want to get high, so high. To the second, let's do it. Yep. Hello, Sushi. <laughs> I'm still going out there. <laughs> Do you speak Korean? Yeah. Have you ever been? Because so you've been in Korea. Okay, because I did a joke. <laughs> okay, so I'm on, I'm on, I meet this girl, right? The girl is in Ohio. She claims to be a pop star in Korea. Which I thought was hilarious. I mean, she, but she's like, she didn't, she didn't have like necessarily any kind of accent. She's probably born here in the United States. Some twist of events. I say, I do not believe you. She says, I'm on YouTube. She started saying it. So I pull my iPhone and I said, let's see right now. So I YouTube her and she was there in like a Destiny Child type group, but everybody's Korean and they singing like Korean R&B songs, right? Uh, he had to be there. <laughs> it's like a bar joke. So then I started saying all these jokes about how they had to go on after the military. Because <laughs> it was in the was in the stadium. And I was like, all right, girls, you're up after the military. Because, you know, I always think it's funny. Every time I see Korea on the news, there's a military parade. It's just funny for an American because... That's the North. You're probably right. That makes more sense. You know, America, we don't do that kind of shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we just like, look, take our word for it. We got weapons. <laughs> Trust us. <laughs> so, no, we got we got some shit. USA, we gangsta man. Don't, don't forget, don't forget who we are. We are armed to the teeth in this motherfucker. In our con guns is in our constitution. Our national anthem is a war song. And I quote, and the rockets red glare. We'll be like, them bombs burst in. We'll be like, yeah, some bombs burst in. As long as the flag's all right. As long <laughs> as long as our flag is still there. It's true. We did, we like war in America. We're good at it. <laughs> Everyone's got to export something. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, we export heartache. <laughs> we recycle. <laughs> People. Sushi, anyone? Would you like some American sushi? You sure? It's American sushi. It's made out of actual Japanese people that we killed during the Second World War. <laughs> Pretty damn yummy. I'm just kidding. I'm totally, jo <laughs> totally joking. But we did that. That's what's so crazy about being an American. We did that. And, that, and we consider that a good thing. We firebombed Japan and dropped two atomic bombs on them just to see what would happen. Oh, shit, they work. <laughs> 
The rest of you countries can't say that, can you? And don't let Iran even try to get a toaster oven. We will bomb them to the end of town. <laughs> well, you motherfuckers making toast over there? What the fuck you doing? <laughs> Niggas is trying to toast. Are they trying to toast bread in the Middle East? Is, is Israel okay with that? Hello, Israel. They, they are trying to make toast. What? <laughs> you gonna let them make a toast? Where did you get those bagels from? <laughs> and I mean, they didn't be like, what? I'm just trying to toast my bagel. <laughs> <laughs> he eats bagels, but get it? Because he's a dumb thing, but then at the same time, he enjoys a good bagel at the same time. Because everybody's so crazy. <laughs> But Barack's here to change all that. <laughs> Barack is a much needed facelift for our foreign policy. All these things sound much better coming from a black dude. Because <laughs> you can tell he's not his fault. <laughs> you can't like so hungry or what? Go ahead and answer man. Yeah. She will. Help yourself. I just ate it. Nothing's happening. <laughs> oh, come on, man. You just don't want to share with me because I'm brown. <laughs> I'm just gonna, exactly. You see, yeah. I like that she said she goes, that's exactly it. But you know what? It's like, we both joking, but we both kind of serious. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I know, I know. I'm just playing with you. But I would share with you. You know why? Because I'm, I'm not, seriously. I like saying racist jokes because it's part of my culture, but. Try it, Dennis. I know where to take you out tonight. Go give it a try. Oh, I thought he was talking about me. I thought he was like, holy shit, didn't that get a little weird for a second? When he's like, go give it a try. I was like, really? Go on now, try him out. Listen. I'm not going to force my sushi down your throat. <laughs> I'm totally joking. I like you guys, by the way. And I think you're going to make it. And you guys can travel all over the world together. What could stop you? I'm going out. This guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean it in a good way. I'm crazy. I'm the one eating sushi for someone just handed to me. I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm a risk taker. I'm just kidding. I know you wouldn't do that. Hey, can I have some more soda? She called me baby. That shit, tur shit turns me on. I like sexy talk. You're only 21. You don't even know what sexy talk sounds like. The best sushi. I haven't tried it yet. She's still young. 21, you know how much you got in front of you? Young girl. 21, that age, that's the age you pull your dick out and she might giggle. She might giggle. <laughs> <laughs> might shock her. <laughs> it's not you. No, I would never pull my dick out like that. Those days are over. <laughs> that's how I stopped drinking. I pulled my dick out at New Year's party. I was drunk. It was like five, four. I was probably like, what if I pulled my dick out of this? <laughs> Three, two. And then I looked down, I was like, oh shit, it's out. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I had to make all new friends. So tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Will, what time you got? It's uh, one thirty-three. Perfect. That means I want to get this sushi at the buzzer. The last second. 
He's gonna be making that last row. Oh fuck! As soon as he sees that number. <laughs> they know what I like. Fish. Fish. Spices. All right, gang. You literally, I've, this has never happened before. You're literally wearing me down. I thought I would have broken you by now. My powers are fading. Took too much time off, and you're sleepy. And you got me with a mama joke. I really should get you back before I go, but I can't do it. Something about you makes me, I know that I'd probably like you if I knew it. What makes you doubt that? Oh, you'd embarrass me. Oh, you're like, look at the British Lisa Lampanelli. You know, I know, I know, I know. She's an American insult comic. But it's funny because she's kind of famous, but these all these guys, like, it's probably not a person. But she calls herself the queen of me. But I think the real queen is just. <laughs> if you wanted to be here, truth. I don't want to start up. <laughs> Live a little. We have something to do in that hostel besides playing Uno with all these people. <laughs> I know what goes on in those places. And she's only 21. You guys think I'm asleep. When I'm awake, and you think I don't know, but I do know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that might surprise you. Everything that I say, everything that I say is the truth, and that is a lie, and that <laughs> is the truth. <laughs> Think about that shit for a couple minutes. <laughs> I just want to see you light up. And then when I see you years from now in the hospital, I... <laughs> and it should have been you, Dave. But I quit smoking years ago. No, if, if you don't smoke, yeah. Give it to, who smokes at that table? You will? I'm going to have to ask the management. Technically, we're closed, right? I can't jeopardize their liquor like. You see, I can smoke on stage because it's actually considered to be part of my act legally. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight, as part of my act, she gets to smoke with me. <laughs> no, you don't have to come on stage. You can sit right there. But I have to light it for you, otherwise it's illegal. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your name? Leisha. Leisha? Good to meet you. L-I-C-I-A? L-I-C-I-A. -I -I okay, just making sure there's no C-I-A in that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been having a lot of strange coincidences recently. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, watch your hair, please. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to burn your hair. That shit would just be Not like... Not bad experiences at all. There you go. No, no problem. <laughs> feel better now, don't you? <laughs> Doesn't that shit feel good and exhilarating? <laughs> smoking inside? Yeah. You can't even smoke in England. <laughs> so. They banned it in Europe. I thought there would be a fucking war. <laughs> Banned the cigarettes. Can you smoke in Korea indoors? I'm on the way. <laughs> Is it expensive, South Korea? <laughs> Visiting. <laughs> Can I rent a flat? How much? 
fifteen hundred a month, one bedroom. I, I'm only gonna save a week. Pocket change. Wow. Shit, I forgot you got. You spend pounds. That's like seven fifty. I'm on the way. Is it hard to hook up those plaques? Reggie Mac. Damn. Is that Reggie? Oh, my fault. Right. You look just like Reggie McFadden. I'm sorry I did that to you. The lights are bright. <laughs> You're a comedian, though, aren't you? You're just a regular guy. Regular, regular dude with a bartender. And you just walking up the street. Just walking on a bartender. Oh, you was a bartender? Yeah. At one of the bars around here? Yeah. And then you looked on that little TV screen in the front. I saw you. And you saw me, and you were like, I haven't seen this episode of Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> That shit is happening now. <laughs> and you know how to live. You walk right in the door. It's like, I'm just going to get a glimpse of this dude. Sir, yeah. you are witnessing right now something <laughs> that rarely is seen. Me bombing. But Fucking. You love to watch him bomb. Huh? You're right. I do love to watch him bomb. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My favorite comedy tape is Richard Pryor's Still Smoking. Have you ever seen this? At the Improv in Hell's Kitchen. About 40 minutes long, it was, the crowd was freaked out. He started the show, he's like, a little nervous. I haven't done any cocaine all day. This is in the 70s. Crowd was kind of like... <laughs> and then he started doing these routines about his mom sucking people's dicks. I mean, just like he's crazy. You ever seen this? And then he say, uh, I mean, his... He said crazy shit. It is weird, isn't it? He says he says on that tape, he says, he says, never let a faggot suck your dick. Cause they'll tell. <laughs> and the crowd's just like This is the weirdest. It was so fucking weird. The thing I like about the tape is this. Okay, so he does all these routines. He bombs. You can tell he's kind of nervous because I mean, he'll say something real crazy. He'll be looking there. He'll say something crazy and he'll look up. Look at the crowd like, just see what it does to him. He starts freaking him out. I can tell he's even freaking himself out, which happens. It was good though, right? And then uh, at the end, they show the list of all the jokes. You remember this part? They just, they just cut to it. And it's like a list of jokes in his handwriting. Some of the words are misspelled and shit. <laughs> Damn it. Every joke on that list became like one of his famous routines. But you could tell it was like the beginning, just working it out. And the shit stunk. <laughs> Why am I telling you that? Because I need you to know that that Houston rapist shit is fucking hilarious. <laughs> I was telling male rape jokes tonight, sir, you missed it. I did jokes about uh, bombs bursting the air and eating sushi made out of Japanese people. I was saying like really crazy stuff, but I don't know, one of these shits might be a winner. Maybe useful. The Brits don't think so. <laughs> Your comedy is a little different, just a little bit. When I go to Britain, I have to do like they like they like a little more thought or preparation. Than <laughs> you guys got a little more polish to your shit, but yeah. I think so. No, yeah. who's your top comic right now? Yeah. I remember Lee Evans from my twentieth birthday party. He was at the Edinburgh Festival that year, and he won the Perrier Award. Lee Evans. He was in the Something About Mary movie. And... <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> he was funny. What did he think? But he's not... He was a guy that... Remember one guy fake like he was handicapped? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, that's a, that guy's actually British. He played American in the movie, yes, but... But his name is Lee Evans. But his act is very physical. Like to an American, you wouldn't laugh so much. <laughs> like, you know, Americans like guys like Russell Brand, like crazy. We like craziness. We like people to say crazy shit. <laughs> Who? <laughs> yeah, your comments like to act more. And if American comments, they'd be like, you're fake. And Australians, you guys are more like us as far as your comedy sensibility because you're a penal colony. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Totally joking. Totally joking, sir. None of them. Bitch, you a penal con. I don't know if that's true or not. It's hurt. It isn't? Were we a penal colony? I heard that about America. Is that true? That America was a penal colony and we just rewrote our history? No, we were pilgrims. <laughs> penal colony? No, we was holy rolling. Well, what have we learned in the last few hundred years? I think we've learned that starting a country is a messy business. It just requires a lot of hard work that you shouldn't do yourself. What you should do is import some Negroes <laughs> and systematically dehumanize them. I'm just kidding. That did happen. That happened. I'm sorry, everybody. That happened. And I have an entire miniseries to back me up. And that miniseries is called Roots. And you can probably <laughs> take a look at it. And you, <laughs> and, huh? Uh, according to my brother, he is. <laughs> it's the thing we do. It's actually funny to say that we do that in my house. We call out characters from Roots. And my brother says, I'm Chicken George. <laughs> and I say, I'm Kunta. <laughs> and it's kind of fitting. You know why? Because Chicken George was a strategist who fought chickens and via his chicken fighting skills managed to get himself free and his family free. I'm Kunta. The runner. I'll come back for you. <laughs> and then I get caught and I'll be like, I was gonna come back, but I got caught anyway, so don't worry. And I guess my sister would be like Kizzy. Remember Kizzy? When Kizzy was writing on the table and he smacked it. Psh, can't read. It used to be illegal for black people to read in America. Did you know that? It's true. Even now. <laughs> Barack Obama has to sneak and read. <laughs> what are you doing, Barack Obama? <laughs> trying to look over these bills. With, trying to read the bill about repealing the law about me not reading these bills. I'm just kidding. Those laws are long gone. You see, young ladies, our Constitution was an amendable document that changed with the hearts of the people. So we thought. That's what, that's what they said. Don't you know anything about American history? Anything? You know who Benjamin Franklin was? Oh, modern world history is mainly American world history. Still on top, so <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> America. <laughs> that was when after 9/11, America was like puppy. What was? They don't want to see us shine, haters. <laughs> we do good. We do good in America. Our cars. Seen better days with the rest of the <laughs> All right, she got us with the Jaguar thing. But have you ever drove an American muscle car? Do you know the joys of a Dodge Charger? The General Lee? <laughs> Even the horn was racist. It was great. <laughs> Who you got to be from America? These jokes are hilarious. Pontiac, we build excitement. And don't get me started on them Belgian cars. Because <laughs> you, know you know how the Belgians, you know how the Belgians do. I don't want to be offensive, but everybody know about the Belgians. Wild. I like England. I do. I more than like England. I love it. I have great. Hmm? No, you sound way better than that. You sound better than me, Dick Van Dyke, and all the rest of us that can't talk like you. But there's just a couple things that you don't have as good as us. There's only a couple. Hip hop music, you haven't caught up. 
and I hate to tell you this, you're never gonna catch up. <laughs> not, in, not in that genre. And you never had a Richard Pryor. You, your country could never produce a Malcolm X, nor would it, nor is he necessary. America is the kind of country that creates the necessity for its dissenters, kills the dissenters, and then celebrates. And that will never happen in England. Not with no black Malcolm X, no black nationalists, because it's... You don't have race dinner. Huh? You don't have race dinner. What's a race dinner? <laughs> they have race dinners? <laughs> oh, we don't have roasted dinners. Well, let me tell you something. We don't want roasted dinners. We want sushi. <laughs> no, listen, listen, listen. All right. You guys dress better. Maybe not than New Yorkers, but you dress better than most of America. Uh, but you don't have good food like we get. Like... No, every time I'm in England, I've been eating at Pakistani restaurants, yeah. Jamaican restaurants. <laughs> and every time they get, well, every time they, no, you guys will be like, would you like some haggis? Haggis? <laughs> All right, well, you sure it is? Okay, then. Braveheart. <laughs> you gotta remember Braveheart. That that line exists in the hearts of people. You know, I once met a girl, and she tells me, uh, I said, where are you from? She says, well, I'm half Honduran and half Nicaraguan. And I was like, whew, you should take the lines on the map seriously, right? <laughs> It'd be like me saying, I'm half from Ohio and half from Michigan. <laughs> it seems like it's not that far away. Although I didn't meet somebody from Cardiff. Right. And I could tell he was from some place that wasn't he. <laughs> you from Cardiff. I did a show in Cardiff. I went over that bridge and everything. <laughs> I've been all over the country. Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, Brighton. London, <laughs> la 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 la, bath, <laughs> shower, everywhere. That's the name of places, bath. I remember that place. You live by bath? Oh, that sounds hot. Mm. Bath. <laughs> You do call it bath. <laughs> and when you jerk off, you call it wanking. <laughs> what do they call when girls do? You call it tossing yourself off? I saw a sign. You toss yourself off. I don't know. You ever see one of them things where you just push it and it goes start going click, clack, click? <laughs> That's a good jerk off joke. <laughs> the whole room sets off. Hey, where you going, miss? Kind of toss off. That's good. <laughs> I just wanted you to say that so bad because they were just talking about. I know, I know you got other things to do. This is what this is how we relax in America. We talk dirty in dark rooms. <laughs> Giggle about it. <laughs> no, we're free here. <laughs> Not only can you go to the bathroom, let me tell you what else you can do. You can take your shirt off in America. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, I'm getting a little desperate. Sushi spot's closing on me. I have important, I literally have important things to do, and, I, and this is just, I can't even tell you how much fun this is for me. You know why? 
because weird as this is, I'm, I just think it's great. And I will deny that I was ever here. <laughs> so my reputation will be intact. That's good. What reputation? <laughs> hmm? I, I know I love you, Trump. I, you know what? You could be my British girlfriend. I gotta ask my wife. Like, you, you be a good candidate. You be a good candidate because you defended me, and that's what how how me and my wife first fell in love. Let me tell you something. Back during our courtship, right, our sexless courtship. <laughs> I used to have all these schemes of how I'd get her to sleep with me. One of the schemes was that I would invite her to a show. This is a pretty harsh story. I said I'd invite her to a show, and then I'd wow her with my blah, 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 blah. You can imagine how that scheme goes. But the plan went horribly awry. I was at Caroline's. I'm sorry to bring up another club. That's why I was. And it was some kind of weird function there that night. And I was heckled by a lady, one of the rich Upper East Side women, cold, you know, rich, rich, rich white lady. And the only reason I mentioned she's white was relevant to the story is that in the course of heckling me, which you heckled me, I don't really mind, but you got to remember, you got to remember circumstances. I got a girl that I'm trying to impress, and I'm a lot younger. And in the course of heckling me, she called me a monkey. <laughs> We right, which has this weird racial overtone, and you know, again, now even if that happened to me now, I don't think that it would have done as much to me as it did at that moment. And that moment, I was like furious because this girl was dead, and I, was, and I fucking flipped out. I Jeremiah write it out on this bitch. I was just like, yo, bitch, if you shave a monkey down, is it black or white? And answer the question. That's like going all crazy, and. uh as I'm yelling at her, I see my girlfriend, and there's my wife, and there's my girl, she gets up, fuck, she starts walking towards the door. So I'm now I'm real embarrassed. And as she's walking towards the door, she walks right over to the lady's table, and she leans into her ear, like a whisper, and she says, you are a fucking cunt, real loud. <laughs> I mean, screamed it in her ear, and I was on stage like, oh, my God, I'm falling in love. <laughs> Little did I know that years later, all that anger would be directed at me. <laughs> I mean, life, life has a funny way, you know. But she, like I said, you could be my British girlfriend because you see the finish. She wasn't pissing? She wasn't taking the piss. Oh, no. What does that mean, taking the piss? <laughs> Oh, I know, no, I know. Me and her are already cool. She's my sister in law. You could be my other bridge girl. All you have to do is plant a flag in something and it's yours. If history has <laughs> if history has taught us nothing else. And that's why America owns the moon. And you guys can enjoy our moon. You're welcome to look at it. If you're going to go to the moon, you're going to have to call us in advance so that we know that you're going to go check. Yes, you can own parts of the moon. Oh, you ha you have a, you have a part of the moon in your house? Okay, that is actually property of the United States. America. <laughs> and now you're going to have to return that moon chunk. I don't know how you acquired a chunk of our moon, but you're going to have to give that back. It belongs to American taxpayers. And we've got to pay China back. And that, <laughs> and that little moon rock is part of our business plan. Yeah. It is some kind of crazy about this. America owns the world. <laughs> Y'all should have thought of it first. <laughs> But no, he didn't. Uh, the moon was there the whole time. And we was the first ones to be like, son, let's go to that motherfucker. Yeah. I don't know why nobody else thought of that shit. But I'm glad it was us. I just feel lucky sometimes when you look up at the moon like, Phew. we got that shit. Oh, my God. That foresight. Our leaders. 
It's useful too. I'm glad we have it. Hmm? It does control the tide. That's why nobody fucks with us. <laughs> you flood your shit. I don't want you making no toast. I don't want you doing nothing. Is that Matt Dina John at the beach? Are you at the beach, motherfucker? The moon is powerful, that's right. It controls the tides. There's something else the moon does, they said. It has cheese in it. There you go. <laughs> Scientific fact. <laughs> this might actually be my one. <laughs> what if I wasn't supposed to be? <laughs> that's the government. <laughs> Oh, it's a friend of mine from a whole other country. He's in GMT. I do know famous people. Who's your most famous friend? That I know. Or your phone book. My phone book? <laughs> Myself. Famous people don't give me their numbers. I be prank calling people. I do, I do that. This phone doesn't really have anyone super famous. Rappers. I don't even know. I don't call a lot of these people, so I don't know if these numbers are good. I'll show her because she don't believe. Hey, Dave. 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 Oh, I know people. I got your mama's number in here, too. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not under her name, it's under Don't Pick Up. <laughs> hey, y'all! <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't know your mom. No, I'm just joking around. We all love our moms. Except for Eminem. He hates his mom. I only know because he told me. Not directly, he told me on the record. Is my friend from Korea leaving? Can I get a ride? Like uptown. Like no, I'm going uptown now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going uptown. No, just kidding. I'm not going uptown. And I'm going west. Where are you going? Like west. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait a minute. This might work out. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Yeah. I'm stovetop. <laughs> I'm staying. <laughs> are you really roommates? And what about you? I wish I lived with them, but I live downtown. I wish you lived with them too, because this <laughs> shit would be just too much. We make a little hostile. <laughs> and by the way, uh, I'm joking. I respect you. I respect your womanness, whatever that is to you. No, I'm serious. I said the most fucked up joke the other night to my sister, and I wish I could remember. And I was, no, it wasn't my sister, it was my wife. No, it was funny, though. It was funny. <laughs> what were we watching? Oh, we were, <laughs> we were watching a DVD of that movie, Unforgiven. You ever seen this movie with Clint Eastwood? So it's the beginning of the movie. When a girl gets a <laughs> when a girl gets a face cut up, and then the guy brings their horse, and she goes a horse, a horse. She goes, we might be whores, but we're not horses. She said, we might be none but whores, but we are not horses. I was my wife, and I said, she's a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, wait a minute, that's not funny? Okay. Come on, that's not what I'm wanting. I said it to my wife, she thought it was funny. She said, we're not, she said, we might be whores. We're not horses. Baby, she's feminist. That was her. It's a cowboy movie. That's why that's funny. It's old. Old, ancient history. It's old America. Peace. Where are you going? Home. Where are you from? 
Oh, you're American. Sorry, everyone talks so funny in here. I'm starting to go a little crazy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't talk funny. Well, hey, get home safe. Are you going uptown? Yeah. To the west side? Yeah. Wait for my friends, would you? <laughs> Once you guys all get home safe together. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. I might actually do it. I had a goal tonight, so I'm going to walk this entire room. so crazy. I never noticed you before. <laughs> Was she here before? Oh, I'm sorry. That's a weird feeling. When you see people come in the bathroom, you see going. No. Thank you for actually... I can't believe that you guys stayed through this whole show. Hey, what's your names anyway? Joan. Joan what? Sure it is. Jenny. Jenny. Jenny what? Mind linger. <laughs> My, say it again. Mind linger. My linger? Are you an actress? No. I would say if you are, keep that name. <laughs> Jenny My linger. My linger. I said it right. I know it was something. Joanna <laughs> Gusman. What is it? <laughs> Gusman. Yes. All right, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are supposed to do the British. Here, here, here. <laughs> I've watched your House of Lords on the uh, C-SPAN. This is the craziest looking Congress of people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they heckle each other. How did Cheeky and Oscar get the job? Did you say Cheeky? That was nice. Hey, take care, John Kim. Jen Mylinger. Miss Gusman. I'm sorry, Miss Gusman. I am for real. Never meant to make you doubt the cry. I apologize at the time. I'm sorry, Miss Gusman. Ooh, I am for real. I don't know why I just had to say that. Uh, I'd like to sign uh, Titty Ball. I'm just kidding. Let me get a... Yeah, I'm just joking. It's getting late. You got a pi- No, a regular piece of paper. Blank piece of paper. I can't sign an American dollar because there's so few right now and we need... <laughs> can't be desecrating and shit. I'm really trying to keep our money... Keep our money right. Barack's speech had me inspired. Oh, that's from a meeting I went to. I appreciate you. No, I do. I appreciate you. When are you going to be in England? Well, I'm, it's funny last. I have no plans. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of these. You know what? I like visiting there. Only reason I don't go there more honestly is because it's so expensive. <laughs> And I haven't been working. Hmm? What? 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 I got pen. I got paper. Got it all, baby. What's your name again? Lila. L. E. I. L. Don't touch the sides. <laughs> a. L-E-I-L-A. L-E-I-L-A. Like Futurama. In my eyes. Nice name. <laughs> 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 what is Layla? Wow. Layla. I thought it was Layla. I thought it was Layla. I thought You ain't installed me with a piece of paper. No, you're not a bitch. I call, I call people bitches, but not just women. People, men and women. I think it's funny. No, thank you.
Oh, wait a minute. Let's do it right. Let me pull out my penis. I said this motherfucker. Oh, I'm just kidding. To, uh, finally, a closer. <laughs> And I was like, you know, you can't find that last joke. And then the lady, I was like, hey, I'll start getting, oh, I'll get off on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I got blank face. You know, the only thing worse than uh, getting walked out on by a crowd is signing for <laughs> And I'll do that. Because I have that much. Hey, Will. I love you, guys. <laughs> I just can't talk about you. You got it all right with me. Are you really from Cambridge? You go, do you go to university there? Southampton. Yeah, we were to the same uni, but my home is Okay. Southampton. Seriously? You know why I don't like facts like that? Because I'll remember them. Oh, shit. Well, like, oh, Years from now, I would repeat that fact to somebody without having fact checked it with a stripper. Hey, oh, I'm sorry about that. No, 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 thank you. Keep smoking. It's, it's bad, it's bad. We got to stop. All right, gang. Get some rest. No. Uh, cheers. Hey, man. Hey, cheers. Cheers, man. Nice on you. And enjoy the, uh... <laughs> which sound way better than what I'm hearing. Very nice long straight. <laughs> Let her finish. What were you saying? Lisa? I'm sorry, Lisa. What were you saying? Well, this meeting of the UN is almost adjourned. It looks like the Brits are walking out on my peace plan. Uh, uh, but Leela wants to have a secret meeting. <laughs> so, all right, Leela, 94th Street. West. She said West. <laughs> right. Hi, I'm looking for a hostel. Is there a hostel around here? Dave, you come. What are you looking for a hostel for? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got to get some sleep. Oh, I let it sit too long. Sushi is like a fine Japanese food. Oh, as a matter of fact, it is a fine Japanese food. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I won't even finish that sentence. Isn't this much better than television? Because yes. we can see each other. <laughs> no, when we on television, I feel like the crowd got an unfair advantage because they can see me, but I can't see them. This is much better. So you guys traveled all the way from Belgium together? No. Oh, seriously? Did you really, man? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You met her here? Man, you're having a great trip. Finally, I was waiting for you to get back funds. I call it all cool people funds, by the way. You know why? Because I'm Richie and everyone's clicked. <laughs> and I just want to find a click where I can do funds for a change. Can you give us about the hospital? Deal. Let's get it. Where's your hostel at? Uh, near Central Park. I only have to walk all the way to it. You know what? I almost would give you a ride to your hostel, except it's a little gay. Let's get it. I'm totally joking. <laughs> I'm totally joking. Hey, Dad. Huh? No, yeah, but you know what? Even, and even if you guys are staying at the gay hostel and not the fun one on 94th Street, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, whatever it is. I'm totally joking. I think you say no homo. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? All right. Hey, what's happening, man? Man, I'm going through it tonight. That's what we're hurt. But it's good, though. It's good for me. How you been? Um, no, I'm good, man. I mean, you know, you know what? When, when people ask me questions like that, sometimes I hesitate. It doesn't mean that I'm doing bad. It just means that I have to take a minute to separate myself from the rest of the world, so I can figure out how I'm doing, and not answer 
how we're doing. We're kind of fucked up, but I'm all right. <laughs> you feel me, you know, you know what I'm saying. Where are you from? Uh, Ninety second West End. Oh, you're a New Yorker. Yeah. Born and raised. Born in Brooklyn, relocated. Where you Where you born at? Strong Island. Strong Island. Wow. Sound like Buster Rams for a second. Strong Island. Good for you. And where you from? California. Yeah, L.A. girl. No, San Diego. Oh, the San Diego. I don't have so much experience with that city. I went there before with it. It was a long story. What? I killed a whale on Earth Day. <laughs> and I didn't know it was Earth Day and I didn't kill it on purpose. It's a long story. I don't like that. What about you, man? Um, one of the friends that have. Seriously? Yep. You are, you are fucking rare. That's a rare thing to be. What part? Uh, roughly up here. Roughly up on side. This is like your... Most familiar stomping ground. Yeah. It's changed now, hasn't it? Yeah. Can I quote Dr. Dre for a second? <laughs> Things just ain't the same for gangsters. <laughs> I love quoting hip hop music. I like quoting hard rock. Quote a hard rock song and I'll quote a hip hop lyric. <laughs> so let's go back and forth. Chop your breakfast on a mirror. That's a hard limit. Chop your breakfast on a mirror. You know what's so funny? There, there has never been an openly crack smoking rapper. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have like a rap lyric for that. Chop your breakfast on a mirror. Holy shit. I can't top that one. <laughs> Down in a hole, losing my soul. There you go. Okay. How about this? Thinking of a master plan. <laughs> it ain't nothing but sweat inside my hands. So I dig into my pocket, all my money is spent. I dig deeper, still coming up with lint. So I start my mission, leave my residence, thinking how can I get some dead presidents? I need money. I used to be a stick-up kid, so I think of all the devious things I did. I used to roll up, just hold up. Nothing funny. Stop smiling. Still in the mood with the money. <laughs> That's my favorite shit. He actually says a rapper. We have this music in America. <laughs> Rappers talk about all kinds of shit now. Not just the clothes and the car. Because the truth is always in the rap music. Listen. 1990 rap group NWA came out with a song called Fuck the Police. They made this song, they got put on the FBI watch list. Police fraternity fucking hated their guts. Everybody hated their guts. How you make a song called Fuck the Police? Two years later, short 700 days, a guy named Rodney King gets the shit beat out of him on the LA freeway. And everybody in America was like, oh, that's what they were talking about. <laughs> but nobody listened when they say it. But rappers always talk about what's going to happen. What happened? Three years later, a band from LA remade it. Oh, fuck the police? Well, who? Who remade it? A rock band? No. See? Because it's a sentiment. And then, I mean, everybody's rap music will say everything. Everything is going to happen. Time to get paid. Blow up like the world trade. Remember that? <laughs> Global warming. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> See? This is It's out there, though. You know why? If it's rock music, if it's rap music, if it's whatever music you listen to, artists are the truth. You know why? Because everybody gets information, but only artists can interpret information on an emotional and an intellectual le level simultaneously. They can make you think and feel about something at the same time, no matter what kind of music it is. That's why whenever a society goes through its turmoil, and the government wants to repress the people, they always go after the artists first. Always. 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 <laughs> but if you tell pussy jokes, you're safe. <laughs> Just as long as you don't tell no political pussy jokes. Unless <laughs> one.
A political <laughs> A political pussy joke? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so I'm fucking Nancy Pelosi right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't even I don't even know what that sounds like. But she does have some I'd bag her. <laughs> she got some nice titties. <laughs> Sarah Palin? Yes or no? No. <laughs> I like this guy's standards. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> I know. That's the thing we need to see. I like that though. You know why? Because if you can imagine yourself having sex with a woman like this, do you know what that means? That means that you look at powerful people as people. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I misinterpreted you. <laughs> Turns out it means he'll fuck anything. <laughs> I thought. Musician at a party. I'll fuck anything. Are you a musician for real? Yeah. Okay, what do you play? Guitar. Rock guitar? Yeah. And you ten bar? Like that, you ten bar and you play rock guitar. Yeah. Do you know what that means? You're a bartender. <laughs> 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 wow. You're my best friend. <laughs> Holy shit, that's your best friend to say this? I know. Imagine how good a bartender is. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's true. It means all of those things. It also means you have an exciting life. Pretty good. It's an exciting life. You play music. And even when you bartending, you get to talk shit all that. It's great. Are you his girlfriend? No. No us. Are you in the band? No. I work with him. I thought she was going to be like, I'm the tambourine player. <laughs> Table's ice cold. See the distance here? No, my fault. Nah, it happens. Oh, thanks. You know, we met my friends from Montreal, haven't you? You speak French, though? Uh, well, not like exactly. We're living in Montreal. Oh, where are you from? T-Dot? Not Vancouver. You're from Vancouver? I'm from Russia. You're from Russia? Now I got to quote Rocky IV. Let's <laughs> get hey, Did you live in Russia? Yeah, most of my life. Really? Yeah. You missed the 80s. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss Russia at all. You don't miss Russia at all? Let me tell you about, in America in the 80s, we used to make movies and talk about Russians so bad. <laughs> Every movie. Have you heard of a movie called Red Dawn? <laughs> I just you gotta rent this movie. Great. Just to see it's a it's a fucking piece of propaganda, man. You know what the movie's about? It's some kids in a high school, right? They in the school hanging out. All of a sudden parachutes start coming there. And the Russians invade America. <laughs> I'm telling you, they made a movie. It is the most ridiculous shit ever. So then they're like the Americans have a rebellion against the Russians in the Vegas. <laughs> It's called It Will Never Happen. <laughs> That's called Red Dawn. It, and you've got to rent it. And you will you will be laughing fucking hysterically. Especially being from Russia. You're going to love that shit. I mean, you're going to hate it. But you're going to hate it so much that you're going to love it. And, then, and I'm telling you that. You know why? Because they're remaking it. Again. Because this time it's the Chinese. <laughs> it's going to be a billion parachutes. I saw it in basic training. Huh? They took us to it. In basic, I was in basic training. They took us to go see it. They took you to see Red Dawn when you were in basic training. And you were like, we're going to fuck them up. They come like, hey, I <laughs> Fucking propaganda is awesome. It's effective. That shit is effective. When I was when I was in the nineteen. No, yeah, no, 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 nineteen. See that? Back in America, you nineteen. Idea, yeah. yeah, man, you supposed to be out there having fun. You supposed to be thinking. <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead, man. Light your cigarette up. Live your life. <laughs> Instead of chasing that paper. <laughs> Said the woman that got beat up in the Lamborghini. It was a Lamborghini. She said, don't chase the paper. Easy for you to say in that Lamborghini. 
I think I don't know. I'd be thinking everything's fake. I'm sorry. I'm a skeptic. I'm a skeptic. Don't you be doubting some of shit? No. Huh? Good for you. Question. Is, this guy just said. I'm doubting it. I used to be Cable's hottest star. At least that's what they told me. <laughs> Uh, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> so, uh, for real, you was in basic for what branch of service? Uh, I was in the Army. Really? Airborne? I was airborne, 82nd. You, 82nd. Oh. You guys first dudes to show up. Yeah, boom. So, if Red Dawn was in reverse, he would be parachuting on your country. <laughs> <laughs> I did, in Panama. You, you was in Panama? I heard that was actually kind of much worse than people thought. It was like a hot war zone for a minute. It was pretty hot. That's crazy. I don't even know what happened to Panama. Something about Grenada and some... Yeah, they just... Uh, Noriega and some crap. And I don't know why. Oh, that's right. We did do that, didn't we? <laughs> remember that? No. You don't remember that? I don't think it's... That's when the United States... <laughs> 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 Said, he called Noriega Pineapple Face. <laughs> what, you go to high school with him? Hey, Pineapple Face. Oh, that, was, that was fucking awful and hilarious. How many people was in Panama? Was it a huge operation? Uh, like three battalions, uh, maybe six, seven thousand. Wow. That was crazy. They just like arrested that dude, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, it took a while. <laughs> he was he was holed up. <laughs> yeah, he was holed up. They had to drive him out. They used uh, speakers and they they played music and drove him out. Oh, that works. If you go to Panama, like the old cast, you can see some of the like the bombing area. I might need to check Panama out. You should. Yeah, I mean, you know. Cigarettes are like. <laughs> Oh, I know about that. <laughs> Holy shit, this guy's got like all the supply lists now. I can't believe it. Can you fucking imagine? That would never happen here. Could you imagine if like, I don't know, someone invaded America and arrested our president? There's no fucking way we would let that happen. You couldn't, you couldn't arrest an American president. Who's going to arrest him? Mr. Bush, you are under our ass shit. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> wow, that actually happened. Was it scary? Uh, You're not supposed to ask soldiers things like that, so it was a bad question. But I'm just curious, was that actually scary? Like, not really. You don't even think about it because he's young. I was a kid. I mean, it's another world. You know, it's another life. Wow, it's good for you. I like. I always admire how people can put that kind of shit behind them. I'd be dwelling on that shit like it was yesterday. Fuck yeah, it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. That's why I'm not cut out from the military. I'm just like you know, too sensitive. And they couldn't beat it out of me. You know how they. And basically, they try to break you down so they can build you back up. I'm not gonna handle that shit. So you go there, but all right, you sack of shit, sack of shit. Hold on, nigga. <laughs> I'm here to help. <laughs> Volunteer. <laughs> Did anyone hear a stripper? They can fact check or something for them. <laughs> 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 stripper, <laughs> now, strippers, we, this is an established fact from early in the show. Remember, we discussed this that strippers is, strippers is like street Google. <laughs> they street Google. If you want to know something, you gotta ask the stripper. These these guys are in bands, right? So you say you're in a band, but your band's starting out, right? Just say it was your band starting out. I don't know what stage of your game you at, but I remember when I was starting out a little, right? Back they comedians, people be on the road, they want drugs or anything. They wanted, they gotta ask street Google, ask stripper. Stripper, know everything about every place you go. If you go to a stripper, that's like getting a timeout, but they put shit, <laughs> but they put shit that's not in timeout. You never heard that? 
He's my stripper. <laughs> he gets everything. Are you really like street Google me? You can just pretty much Google anything you want now. Yeah, I guess you're right. I know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm a pretty morally upright guy, but I just like trying. Are you taking off? Yeah. I thought y'all were in love. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> they sat through this. How you gonna leave this Belgian guy here by himself? He don't know this. Country. He does not know this country. They rape men in America. <laughs> <laughs> He's just gonna leave this guy to his own devices. Come over here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we all gotta get the fuck. Every guy in the room is like, because we don't know about it, the Houston rapist might travel. <laughs> hey, no, thank you. I can't believe y'all stayed that long. You don't have to stay if you don't want to. As a matter of fact, if I was you, I might go. I might go with her. You can take it off? Can... Yeah. You sure you're going to leave him? Don't take him for granted. Haven't you seen the reader? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good. Well, you know what I didn't well, you know, I see why she got an Oscar. But you know what I didn't like about it? it was the, I don't like movies where the music got violins in it. Somewhat, yeah. I gotta collect the tapes. All right, I should really be getting out of here. No. Dude, you clown, Dave. I know. Let's go get fucked up. <laughs> I like the way that guy thinks. That's the old Dave. Stroll <laughs> 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 of the baby on the corner? Yeah, that old Dave. He was. <laughs> old Dave. <laughs> Uh, nineteen-year-old Dave we got in that car, and uh, all the way up to maybe twenty-five-year-old Dave would have got in the car after debating with himself. Thirty-five-year-old <laughs> Dave's like, yeah. <laughs> Parts of him. I just don't think I have the physical stamina to be twenty-five-year-old Dave. Twenty-five-year-old Dave could not eat for four days and smoke weed the entire time. It was amazing. <laughs> no, no, you know what I mean. He'd be on the roads, like I'm smoking some weed, get some coffee. Hey, welcome back! Finally, you guys got rid of the girls. You can be gay like you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally joking. They just had like the hottest girlfriends and their girlfriends left, and then he comes back in like. Ah, this is gone. Thank you. <laughs> but that's you know, but he's but and then he's traveling, right, from Australia with his girlfriend. So you know he might need a breather. No, I actually didn't my jacket. Oh man, I thought you came back with some more comedy. You know what, you're right though. I gotta get I gotta get out of here. Where you going? So we had last time. Where have you got to go? I'm going to the four sides. <laughs> I'm going to go to my room. What? Yeah, well, you know what? You know what I like? No, no, you know why I like to stay in nice hotels, honestly? Because it's like walking to fantasy. No. No, people, some, no, they don't bother you. As a matter of fact, from the moment you hit the door, it's as if you were somebody, even though you're not really somebody. I can't explain it. Welcome back, Mr. Chappelle. You stay on the pick. Uh, yes, I do. What's your best fake name? Uh, okay, not honestly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say to her I'll tell you this one because I don't use it anymore. I fake names. And when I went on tour in 2000, 2002, maybe 2003, uh, on that tour, I checked in under the name Harry Balls. <laughs> <laughs> With a Z. <laughs> Right, so then they'd call me up and they'd be like, hello, Mr. Balls. And then, like, <laughs> Deets, Newts, <laughs> and all that shit. That shit was very... <laughs> it was very funny for us on the tour, because I knew anybody who called my room, they had to have said that. Harry Balls. Can I speak to Harry Balls? Yeah, Deets, Nuts. But they'd always say that, hello, Mr. N Newts. They'd always hesitate. <laughs> oh, that shit's <laughs> 
And if the hotel wasn't so good, they'd be like, <laughs> yeah. Are you going to take your show back? Are you going to take your show back? What show? <laughs> Chappelle show? <laughs> that, that really famous one. Oh, Chappelle show. Yeah. I don't know if it's about getting my show back like, as much as uh, I should really get my name back. And it's kind of. Yeah, it's kind of. 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 It's kind Yes, I do have something that works. Well, I'm currently working on a surveillance video with the FBI. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the fucking tearjerk. <laughs> it's called the man that knew too much. That's good. <clears throat> what am I got in the works? Nothing special. Um, yes, I yes, I do have something that works. Yeah, I'm making, yeah, I'm working on it right now. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Just do it? Yeah. Wow, wait a minute. That's catchy. Oh. Don't with the Nike, just do it. Yeah, fun with the motion. That's right. Don't pretend. Just do it. Just do it. Don't pretend. She just hypnotized me. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, something about when you said just do it made me so fucking sleepy I can't even explain it. <laughs> like she said that <laughs> and it took all the energy out and Will just walked in with a big old pizza no thank you thank you for coming out sushi place is called I heard thank you uh, right there. And I'll say if you want to try it out. Dave, why do you live in Ohio? Why do I live in Ohio? This hey, you're talking about point. Ohio, you know, in New York, in LA. And, uh, where do you live in Ohio? Honestly? Ohio. Why are there chaos? <laughs> yeah, there's like a whole stack of reasons. <laughs> I mean. <Number> one. Huh? <laughs> it's quiet and none of you fuckers are there. We all have what was one reason? I heard you actually live on a farm. I live on a working farm. That's absolutely right. Excellent. You see, the thing is, the thing about it like this, once you make over, like, say, no, not even. I look at it like this. No, the average price of an apartment in New York is $1.2 million. A person who makes over $2 million in a year has to pay over $200,000 in taxes just to live in New York. New York got to pay city tax. And you got to pay state tax, right? Now, you can live anywhere else in America with a high quality of life for a way lower cost of living than New York. So at a certain point, even in California, at a certain point, I ask my friends, I say, yo, why do we work so hard all the time just so we could be in New York? Because it's New York. They go, if I want to get a slice of pizza at 4 o'clock in the morning, I can do that. <laughs> I was like, so you going to build your whole lifestyle around a hypothetical slice of pizza that you may or may not want? It's my whole world. You know, they make frozen pizzas, motherfucker. I can, I can put a pizza in the oven any time of night, too. Damn you, Rays. Yeah. I work 140 hours a fucking fortnight. You work 100, what? 140 hours a fortnight. What's a fortnight? Two weeks. Two weeks. Why? He can tell I've never had a real job. <laughs> he hit me like real job terminology. I work 140 hours in a fortnight. I don't even know what the fuck a fortnight is. 12 hours a day. <laughs> Nearly every day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I get about a... Uh, he needs to move to Ohio. A hundred and... About a hundred grand a year after tax. No, before tax. So I get tax and then I get tax back. Can you buy me a beer? <laughs> <laughs> and a pizza? No, I got only about six grand after that. Well, 60, like, Australian dollars or 60 American dollars? Australian dollars. Oh, so so I'm proud. Right. You're killing yourself. Oh, never mind. I'm killing myself. Good talk. Can we buy you a pizza? But oh, you know what? I, I got to get a beer. But you know what, man? I know a way around it. And it's not... The doll? It's not it's not a perfect strategy, but it might be better. But I'm happy. And that's that's, that's important. 
That's important. No, that's important. And you know what? You happy? I'm happy. 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 i am happy i Hold on, let me get a pen so I can write down your stats. <laughs> 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 I saw a little bit of <laughs> Yeah, no, because no, it sounds like you got the formula for success. Listen, Dave, take a wow. hundred. It's my girlfriend. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you, I just saw for two minutes, she made me happy. His <laughs> girlfriend is... <laughs> no, no, not in the bad... No, I'm saying your girlfriend is... His girlfriend's really good looking, like, yo. He's not in a band, but if you see his girlfriend, you'd be like, who you play with? <laughs> she has <more> than me. <laughs> no, you look like you, you got like a rock star's girlfriend. I mean, nice. I mean, no, she's like Nirvana status, yes. Kirk, looks like Kirk. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, guys, stand there right now. <laughs> <laughs> like that, Bianca. Wait a minute. Let me, Let me explain to you how good looking his. Let me explain to you how good looking his girlfriend is. Let me explain to you how good looking this guy's girlfriend is. He works 140 hours in a fortnight. <laughs> he gets taxed 40 grand. On his hundred grand he makes in a year. He makes sixty thousand Australia. The exchange rate is one dollar every four of our dollars. Guy makes twenty five thousand dollars a year. Oh, Work like, on every day on a fortnight. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me finish. He was one of the happiest people I've met in the last four days. <laughs> what does that tell you? His girlfriend looks fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever met somebody like that? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Yeah, no, it's the guy. Trust me, I've had some of them. That might jump on the fucking kangaroo and like the whole fucking bird. Woo! <laughs> you know what, man? You broke everybody up into groups. <laughs> <laughs> I need your energy, like, I, just, I don't know. Hey, you ever once in a while you have a friend that's like a secret weapon in a rough social situation? You're like, bring out the Aussie. And he just, there's a riot breaking out. He'll just <laughs> split that whole crowd up. Hi! Hey! I work 140 <laughs> hours on a fortnight. 12% of the people there were like, what's, what's a fortnight? <laughs> Two weeks, Mike. Crowd started listening. No, for real, man. For real, man. You what they call dynamic. It's two kinds of characters: the static and the dynamic. You are dynamic. You know how I know? Because you're not even in your own country. You're having a great ass time. You're taking on a room full of hecklers and a professional comedian. You have no mic or speakers or stage to back you up. <laughs> You're just here by yourself. You walked out into a winter night and forgot your coat. <laughs> you are like a motherfucking or original. You are my dude, man. I like dudes like you. Like, why am I so cold? Oh, shit, I forgot my coat. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, man. I heard about that. Clock one and you just keep up. This guy's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he turned, he didn't even know exactly who said it, so he turned to the room <laughs> and said, fuck, why don't you keep up? <laughs> I, for real, man, you all right. You're the kind of person that nothing bad will ever happen to you. You had stomach ulcers for two days and you're still giggling it up and drinking? <laughs> Don't you see your Teflon? You are like <laughs> the bionic Aussie. 
They made them for six million dollars minus the exchange rate. <laughs> Wow, think about that. If I had taken that fifty million dollar deal, I could have bought Bionics. If a Bionic man only cost six million dollars, Australian, I could get part That's of my own. Oh, man. <laughs> I wouldn't even do my whole body. I'd be like, he's saying that he's having a good ass time in whatever language he speaks. <laughs> <laughs> I know we missed a lot. But Have you <laughs> ever been to a show where an audience member gets ripped on by other audience members <laughs> and the comedian can't really defend them that well? <laughs> See, people say, Dave, why do you stay on stage so long? Because if I hang out long enough, something like that will happen. <laughs> and I like to see these kinds of things. No, it's a rare, it's, it is good fun. I could have done a lot of things to have fun, but nothing would be as fun as this. What am I going to do, play video games again? <laughs> Thanks for staying on this long. We just want to see it. Do you have a baby joke? What, the baby joke? Yeah. Oh, man, I haven't done that joke since that night. Come on, baby, what are you going to call me? That's a great joke. It's funny. He's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny as shit, isn't it? It's truth and gist. It's New York. Don't, don't sell weed this time. Sell something else. What? I don't know. Whatever people are People sell weed in New York, I'm sure. Really? Are we keeping you here? <laughs> no. no. I don't mean no, that no, sarcastically. I mean, like. No, I mean no yawning. Oh, no. That's just... Listen, I have physical limitations. Don't tell yeah. anybody. <laughs> but I'm sleepy. But I enjoy myself. What time is it again? Two o'clock? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. All right. That's fair enough. Thank you. Yeah, you Fair enough. <laughs> I walked the overwhelming majority of the room. This room was full. But you guys are new. You guys were here. I'm, I'm staying. Wow. <laughs> I room. live around the corner, man. I ain't going anywhere. Yeah, this man. Baby joke. Baby joke. He's, he's yeah. military trained, though. <laughs> I like that, though. Like, I okay, you're the second person I've met from the Panama operation. And, uh. <laughs> and I can't believe you just said that. Off the top of your fist. And they were arresting, of course, President Pineapple Face <laughs> of Panama. You know, Manuel Noriega heard you say that. He's it would probably jail. hurt his feelings. He's yeah. Still, he's still in jail. He'll man. never get out of jail. Never get out. How are you going to get out of jail after you got arrested by the army? <laughs> That's a bad sign. You know what that is? That's like when you... In, when you're in Grand Theft Auto and you get all five stars, that's an army. <laughs> <laughs> Noriega got that shit. He had five stars in Grand Theft Auto and got I'm caught. The army. You know what's great about this part of the night? If I say like half a joke, you guys will finish the entire. Like <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> I can just lay back with a pen and paper. No, you know what's the funniest thing? I was just thinking like a minute ago, I'm not going to remember anything with this. <laughs> I'll remember something. Come in flashes, though. That's okay. It'll come back to me. You know, I'll stay when I need it. You should have Australian guys. <laughs> that's all I'm going to remember. That, that, that guy was great, dude. The you last said, supper of pussy. Now, that was a line. <laughs> oh, that was funny. It was, yo, you missed it. We missed that. We missed that. There was all this whole table, all hot Do girls. He's trying. <laughs> <out. laughs> and I said it, and then it was the last supper. Pussy. It was hilarious. Maybe not to you, but uh, yeah, I remember. That. Hey, he's back! Thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. hey, man, we getting ready to go. I. Fucking <laughs> criminals. <laughs> You're off the pages of life. <laughs> what happened, what happened, sir? Do you know what I love? What do you love? You are so trustworthy. Oh, that we didn't go through your jacket? 
Why would I steal your jacket in front of all these people? <laughs> oh, that's true. The crowd. No, no. Well, you know how I'm <laughs> Belgian. <laughs> I'm just judging. He is Belgian. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. This guy's all right. So I'm drunk. No, I didn't know. Didn't you know? Don't ever admit that. <laughs> we don't drink. If you can keep yourself oh, in control, I, do now, man. I don't believe. It. <laughs> He's on the piss. Fucking criminals. Have you ever been with someone that's pissed on himself because he's going for it? I'm that normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the inside of his stomach, he's also eating it up and shit. <laughs> like a piece of chicken. <laughs> Like if I was directing a movie about this night, I would cut to the inside of his stomach and I would just show like food in there. <laughs> also eating them up. And then after I show all the stuff that's going on in his stomach, I cut to his heavy face. Then I would cut out to his girlfriend walking in the cold by herself. And then the guy tries to talk to her and she goes, no, don't mess with me. My boyfriend's a killer. And then I come right back to the inside of his stomach. <laughs> and it would be two chicken wings in it. <laughs> chicken wings. All I know. <laughs> no, this next, this whole portion is just for me. There's, a, there's like a little, like half a handful of rice on top, sparsely scattered on the chicken wings. <laughs> Skittles in there, and then there's like blood oozing out of the hole. And it's awesome. <laughs> and I, and you know what I do just to be stupid about? It? I put like a gum wrapper in there. <laughs> just one thing that shouldn't be in there at all. Hoverboard. Yeah. All right, it could be hoverboard. Oh, you know, not even a gum wrapper. You know what I put in your stomach? Okay, so it's two pieces of chicken. Half handful of rice, <laughs> blood's dripping out, and then on top of the rice, the crowd looking up. What the fuck is that? And then pushing slow, and you gonna look, and it's gonna be the head of one of them little Lego men. <laughs> just a little, <laughs> just a little Lego head. What the fuck? That's a joke I remember. Do you remember that joke I said? I have a house. I had him build a mansion for me in China. That's right, the Lego house. Right? And it was built out of Lego. Like a, a toxic and, Lego. And I live in a house. Yeah, I live in a house made of poisonous toys. Right? <laughs> like that. that shit is so funny to me. I don't know why. It was something about cutting it inside of your stomach. Because you said the box. All right. No, I don't need a drink. I am thirsty. So thirsty. <laughs> Can I get some water? Give him a drink. I'm not going to shoot. <laughs> Unforgiven. <laughs> Unforgiven. That movie was great. The last scene. We'll chase that son of a bitch all the way down to Texas if we have done. And he's standing right in the door. Who owns this shithole? You fat man, speak up. I do. I own the stamps, man. I, I bought it from Greeley for four hundred dollars. <coughs> Step aside. Should have armed himself. Wow, he shoots him. That's right. Well, you sir are a cowardly son of a bitch. You just shot an unarmed man. <laughs> Should arm himself. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna decorate his pub with my friend. You be well your money. Killer of women and children. Yeah, that's right. I kill women and children. Cut everything that walked across at one time. I'm here to kill you, little Bill. With kind of what you did to Ned. Remember that shit? Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I study movies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I study movies. Is that water? I don't drink that. That's good. <laughs> totally joke. Is it? Yeah, I really got to get out of here. I'm exhausted. Yeah, no. Fine.
So let me ask y'all a question before I go. No, just give me this answer. This question. I need a quick reality check. What is going on outside of my bubble? What the fuck is going? Recession. Oh, I know about that. I know. I know about that. But I'm trying to figure out is okay. What are they saying about me outside of this bubble? They still got the GVD, man. Yeah. Did they say shit, man? Yeah. Having a good time. That's all. That's right. I need to go back to the office and talk about how Thank you. Everyone wants to know what happened. Do, you yeah. do they really yeah. care? They won't. 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 They won't.